Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to another episode of Downtime in the Hangar, where we talk about all things GBO2 and Tangents sometimes. Today, I'm joined by Gustav the 13th. Yep. And Gaming Emblem. Howdy, howdy. So guys, how was your past week? Gustav? It's been pretty good. Messing with a lot of stuff hardware-wise. Um, also, as we saw last podcast, trying to unleash the goose a little bit more. We are very, 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 very close to finishing up IBO. We're doing the side missions right now in Cross Rays for the uh, side story. And then after that, we'll be home free in the Yakuza territory. That being said, I haven't done the beat em up yet, but that'd probably be something we do before we actually like get into that game proper. If anyone wanted to try to be fun. Cool for that. The like, Streets of Rage. Yeah, Streets of Kamado show that they yeah. released. Yeah, I downloaded that. So I'd I'd be up for that. Let me know. Yeah. <laughs> Extra's like, why is the emblem so low res on your stream? I don't know. Green seems a little bit rough, but it kind of varies. Like, you look good on my side, Gustav. I mean, but Gustav always looks good, guys. But um, Magnum always looks a little bit fuzzy for me. Right. Um, yeah, I mean that's just my it varies. Just yeah, my it's probably just camera. because of the green screen too, but like it might just be the connection. I don't know. If... Yeah, I think it's probably it's probably just the connection. Um, yeah, emblem looks oh. a little blurry here, but on the actual um, thing, like side it, thing. It, it looks a whole lot better on the uh, on Streamlabs than it does on Discord right now. Yeah, because we got some of it could be green screen magic. I can see some little pixelies on my headset, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Well, I mean, just literally, just like every like for me, you're almost blurry. Like your your entire. I can't remember like focusing blurry. issues I'm noticing too. Like sometimes it'll just kind of go go in and out, but who knows? But yeah, this looks more of like a connection thing on my end. But yeah. Mm. But but anyway, um. So yeah, Emblem, how was your week? Pretty good. Um, well, for the most part, I've been having, I don't know what it is on the weekends, but uh, I've been having some mad frame dropping, um, particularly on Sundays. I don't know what's going on. I needed to start um, destroying my router before I go uh, go live on Sunday. But um, I've been uh, mainly just messing around. Still more a Genshin Impact. I'm actually, we're live from... Uh, the <laughs> Favonius headquarters today. You guys may may recognize the background. I can uh, I can stream from the lobby today because Klee's out causing a panic, so everyone's a little bit busy. Um, Wait a minute, but I've been that doing the... that up. Oh, that's that. Oh, yeah. See, I, I was thinking that was the Adventurers Guild thing. Oh no, this is the main lobby area yeah, okay. uh, for the Knights headquarters. Yeah, I'm a fan of the but, Adventurers um... Guild. They got green. <laughs> I don't think I've ever actually been inside the uh, Venture Guild's like main room, so I'm not too sure. I don't know, but um, oh, okay, that might be a thing too. But um, it's pretty cool. I reached um, world level um, four. I'm AR36 now, and um, you get a lot better loot. And I actually I got a pretty decent roll on one item. It's just kind of sad because it was one. It was one random roll off of uh, having like pretty much trifecta stats, and we won't even go into what my random upgrades were. But um, it, it wasn't the good stuff. But the wep the item I got was for attack characters, and I got attack percent, um, crit damage, um, and like attack base. And then my other one was like Elemental Mastery, which isn't bad either. Uh, I would have preferred crit damage um, yeah. to go with it. But as you level it up, there's a chance for you to get random upgrades. And let's just say they were doubling down on my defense. <laughs> Oof. Yeah, yeah, it's always a bummer. Was, uh, mm -hmm. And they, they really did introduce a way to like um, D level and re roll um, because yeah. it's already rough to get gear in that game with the resin system. And I mean, if it's a real feels bad when you actually get something good, but then all the benefit or the bonus rolls are in bad stats, so you just get shafted and you have to go searching again. Um, yeah. 
it reminds me a lot of the ruin or the rune system in summoner's war and how flawed it was in some cases too but um yeah too much grinding and that um still battle operation i was playing ace combat last night that was uh that was fun there's some i got past the mission i was stuck on and was actually doing some dog fighting and i ran into like the main antagonist character and that was pretty fun um the guy has like plot powers or it's just really good but uh it's pretty cool but we're gaming i do have one question what what part are you using mainly on uh genshin right now uh i have venti um I wish I had uh venti, razor you know? yeah i have uh zhongling uh, i think it is zhongling uh zhonglong whatever her name is um i also have uh i i still like to say kiki kiki chi chi whatever you want to call her um and i'm mainly focusing on her and uh venti right now yeah pretty much my two best damage dealers apparently um uh, and i mean in practice seems to be jungling mm. and uh Fischl, or official if that's how they say it in english oh yeah i mean i think the proper german way would probably be more of Fischl, but yeah mm-hmm. um So far, that's been my lightning and fire. Um, Ningguang, just being able to mine everything and know where it's all at is just, that's too good. That's why I want Klee as well. And Kiki does the same thing only in Liu, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Does Kiki have um, or whatever. the stuff from Mondstadt? Uh, Klee has the stuff from Mondstadt, yeah. Oh, wow. That's, that's not actually not bad just to have her... Um, just just let you grab stuff while you're wandering around. Because I mean, I'm over picking up random junk unless I'm just literally running over it. Yeah. But the uh, local delicacies are super big deal, so that, that's not bad to have. The the one good thing is I like how they let you have markers. So, mm -hmm. like if you find something that's kind of random and you you know you're like, oh, well, this is a spot, you know. But now I have a kind of like a farming path in most places. So like for the chilies, um, mm -hmm. you can get um. Kind of in the northeast of Liu, you can get a bunch of chilies up there. And then, like, in the city, you can get pretty much all the specialties, like, in the Liu Harbor. Um, you just go mm -hmm. around a circle, and you get a ton of, like, the white flower. I can't remember what it's called now. It's something. And then, like... Yeah, I think it's, like, uh, Chingsi or whatever. And then the pink flower thing. You can get a bunch of those, too. Like, they, mm -hmm. I pretty much... I guess they respawn every like four days apparently or something like that seemed to be about how long it took for them to respawn but yeah when they do you can finish up that weekly quest and doing that two times so it's pretty nice but anyway i need to get better at that uh, but i mean again you can just mark it which is great so so if you if you find something like oh here's like six of this one thing right here boom marked mm -hmm. so that's that is kind of a good thing so I mean, you can do that with the mining crops and everything like that as well. But it's yeah, man, give nice. me one second. But that's that's all for me. Um, cool. That's what I've been doing. Um, but anyway, uh, for me, I've uh, I've been doing um, Gundam, of course. Um, and if you can't tell, Genshin Impact. We've been uh, going pretty hard at that, trying to catch up to a lot of people. I think I'm like at 28 AR, um, and then. Um, yeah, I've been just pretty much doing the usual. The ghost of Tsushima, guys, like, is insane. And I'm going to wait to finish that thought uh, when... Oh, there, there's Emblem. Okay, so, uh, Emblem, you mentioned the loot and stuff in Genshin Impact. Ghost of Tsushima is a game that's not right. around loot, but it feels like it's done a better looter game in its, like, wave-based mode and getting loot and, you know, building a character around whatever stats you want. You can reroll stats. You, you know, everything is just free. There's this giant wall of cosmetics. You've got all these masks. you got, you know, 50 masks, 50, um, like, chest pieces to put on based on what class you're playing. You've got their back piece or whatever. I mean, it's insane. The amount of loot is just crazy. And the amount mm -hmm. of cosmetics is just crazy. And guess what? It was just free. They just updated the game. And it's all in there. There's no DLC. Now, I think, because it wasn't clear, I think if you buy mm -hmm. Ghost of Tsushima now, you might have to buy the DLC. But anybody who already had it 
just got it for free. So I don't know if that's like they they gotcha. didn't really they weren't really clear about like if you don't get it, you know. So mm -hmm. there could be that. So if that's the case, oops, a little bit. But at the same time, the amount of content in this update for multiplayer is just amazing. Like, and then they not only did they add all this multiplayer, they added loadouts to the game, which ten mm -hmm. out of ten. That's my only complaint. And then the new game plus also has a lethal plus to make it even harder. And if you want to make it even harder, you can turn on curses in the game just to make everything even more hard. Or, or, Are or, curses kind of like um, those things in Halo? Yeah, kind of like the skulls. It makes it... Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. That's so, cool. Yeah, what so... are other things called those, like mutators or whatever? Something like that. But, um, mutator, I hardly know her. Oh, my gosh. The, oh, no. Every, every time you do but, that uh, laugh now, I can't, I can't help but think of the, the, oh, my gosh, the, the VTuber stream you did. <laughs> That's amazing, uh, though. That was, that was great. But, um, but yeah, the, uh, that's pretty much Ghost of Tsushima. Other than that, uh, yesterday I fought an army of wasps while I watched a war of the wasp outside. Um, yeah, a fourth fun. party had arisen. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, pretty much. So, yeah, real quick. Them. Yeah, so real, real quick, just to kind of, uh, just to kind of go through that. So I got a new chair, and uh, cool, so my cool. mom, my mom was like, "Hey, it's Prime Day. Here's a chair," and I'm like, "Oh, best bomb. Yeah, got the coolest mom ever." But anyway, um. So, gonna set up a thing over there. I got two. Uh, I mean, these are like 50 years old at this point or something. But anyway, it's hardwood, perforated hardwood that I'm gonna. And they're not that old. But anyway, my grandpa used to run shops and stuff. So actually, they might be that old. Uh, but hmm. they um, they're about eight foot tall. So I'm just gonna make a wall, and I can put hooks in and stuff, and then you know, put like my gun plaw and figures and stuff on it. So I'm gonna have a backdrop like that, uh, and then eventually I'll put like. Um, um, the insulation foam, the flat insulation foam on it. You just paint it, and then I'll have a green screen on the back side, so I can just flip them around. Um, so that'll be that'll be cool. Uh, so I tried just to stand them up with some like cinder blocks and stuff, and then everything fell. Oof. And I crushed oh, no. the clock, the puzzle clock over here. So my mom mm -hmm. would be really sad about that. But uh, um, yeah, I I got it back together yesterday before everything started, and uh, it's. Not perfectly back together, so I still need to try to redo it, but that's, you know, our job to take that thing apart and try to piece it back together. Like forever. Um, At least you gotta start up. Yeah, oh, right. and one piece is missing, though, in the side here in the corner, and I'm like, where did it go? But, oh, well, I'll find it. Uh, but, point being, I need to finish that, so I gotta build a frame for that and stuff, but that'll be fun. But, in bringing them in... I laid them on the porch. So the first thing I did was I had to carry them up the steps and stuff. So I was starting to go around to the back porch where the sun hits most. And um, then I saw like two or three yellow and black wasps just flying at my face. And I was like, oh, oh no. shit, I disturbed a nest. We run and we run. And so adrenaline kicked in and I like yeeted all the way around here to the front porch in like two seconds because I, I ain't about to get stung. So like, yeah, adrenaline was going. Um, but then I was like, okay, well, we'll just lay them over here. So I laid them and, uh, you know, just put a block on them so they would kind of flatten out a little bit more. And um, so I left them sit. Well, when I went to go back out later to try to, you know, uh, bring them in and stuff, uh, this was close to when I was around six when I started. And there was just an army of wasp outside. Every window I looked out, there was like three waspers. Like, that window, there was, like, three. Like, they were just everywhere. And I was like, what in the world is going on? I'm like, wait a minute. So I looked up at the light. And, you know, they like to just make a little nest inside the light sometimes and crawl into that. So I'm, like, looking. And I see one, see a yellow and black one. And then I see, like, a bright red one come around. And then it lands. And, like, the yellow one's like, no. And then they just, like, start fighting. And I'm like, what in the world is going on? And then I look and I see, like, there's a brown one landing next to a red one. And then they're going at it. And then a yellow one comes in. And they're all three fighting. And I'm like... What is this war going on of the wasp outside? And I just look and they're they're just all fighting like all around the porch because I got like a three sides of my house has a porch outside, and I'm like, mm -hmm. what is this? What in the world? And I'm like, okay, well I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna try to clean these and hopefully they don't bother me. 
and they kept flying around me and I'm like, okay, this is too, this is too much. I can't take it. I'm going in. So I just carried everything in and then I laid them in the kitchen so I could wipe them down and stuff and clean them off. And, um, then I rounded the corner here and there was like three wasps flying at me and I was like, okay, they're in my house. That's it. So then I like grabbed like everything, got, put some gloves on and I was like, smack, grab this, hit this one. You know, I just started killing them. And then I was like, okay. Then I grabbed the spray, brought the dog in. That's another reason why he's in again tonight. Um, and uh, then I just went out and I was just like, let's go, you know, and just started going, going to ham on him. And yeah, pretty much what Gustav said, a new party approaches. Yep. Full on <laughs> exam mode in the middle of it. You should have, um, you should have recorded all this, Magda. You probably could have made like a, a Netflix documentary or something. Yeah. <laughs> War of the Wasps. The War of the Wasps. Oh my gosh. But for real though, it was like, I was like, I've never seen this many wasps before. I was like, what, what do I do? <laughs> so yeah, if, literal animals attack at your house, man. Yeah. If, 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 uh, if they're there tomorrow when I get out and stuff, then I'm just going to call like somebody and get the house sprayed because it, it's been about At least year. investigate the area around because if there's that many different types too, then like they might be further out. Yeah. I'm like, are they just the passing through? Like, you know, are they passing through because their nest was destroyed and they just all converged on the house at the same time? What's going on? But, um, and then here the other day on the weekend, there was one, like, I had a floor landmine uh, because there was one crawling on the floor and I almost stepped on it. Um, like, literally, I just stood up and it was right here. Like, mm-hmm. and so I just grabbed the nearest, like, game box or DVD and just smacked it, killed it. But, yeah, so I've got a wasp problem now. And I'm just like, I. Every time that I doesn't see, sound like a good problem. To have. No, every time I see a bug move in the house now, I'm like, huh, wasp, because I, I hate wasps. <laughs> like the wasp. Like I'm I'm on I'm on high alert right now. But yeah. anyway, but yeah, that was that was my week. Also, internet problems on the weekend too. I don't know what what that was. It mm-hmm. was Sunday as well. Uh, Probably traffic, I guess. I'm guessing. Like the. Uh, I'm pretty sure I can double check, but I'm pretty sure it was Sunday. I'll, I'll let you know. But like, I think that's probably what it was. But anyway, um, the new suit, guys. And by new suit, I mean literally just has another melee weapon and it's a raid and might have different stats. And that's what I'm curious about. What do you guys think? Uh, real quick, but for those of you watching that can't read Japanese, the caption says, come and get me, big boy, uwu. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now it was worth accidentally. Now, now it was definitely worth accidentally um, getting the wrong one. <laughs> but it might actually say if you want or take her, which pretty much is the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Whilst we're trying to plant a bomb in your base, Magnum. <laughs> bomb has been planted. Oh, no. There's tagging Magnum back. He probably planted a bomb in their base. <laughs> I mean that yeah that's that's exactly what I did yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> Laid siege. Get the fuck out. Yeah, this is my house, man. Come into my house. Try to eat my food. Uh, for a second I thought I might have left something out because they like anything sweet. So mm. I was like, wait, did I did I leave a pear laying out? Did it start going bad? But no. But I've got all the stats and stuff ready for both mobile suits, though. Okay, cool. So, well, here, real quick, what do we, what do we think about it? Hmm. Just in general, before we go over the stats, because I played against it quite a bit last night, and it's fucking scary. It's essentially just a better keyblade, as you would expect for something called the Mark II. Because it's, um, it's a the, melee, the melee speed is actually just as fast. It transitions very quickly between that and its sub weapon. It has the shoulder buffers and all that other stuff going on with it, so it's still not taking as much damage as your typical raid, even though it is a raid. And because everything has high beam resistance, and that's mostly what you're facing outside of like one or two exceptions. But you know, speaking of which, most of those exceptions you now are strong against. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so that's the, the raw numbers that people are saying that that sub weapon is doing on downswings. Like it's it's just the better choice if you can get it. Not to mention it has 
um, priority three. And it has crazy reach. So it's actually beating out other Keyblades in like your typical Bunga suits. You know, when they're doing mm-hmm. these exchanges. But like the reach on it too. Like I, I just remember, I don't know, I couldn't see my health. I was somewhere between 4,000 and 8,000 and I just got one shot by that thing on a downswing. I was like, oh no. And I'm MLRS by the way. So I'm right. I'm like, as an MLRS guy, I think they might have something now that beats the MLRS pretty well in 650. So well, we were already saying in the past though that um, like the MLRS is still still viable, but it was I'm definitely starting to show it. its age yeah. and the yeah. high cost. And I, I think a raid cubile will definitely um, give yeah. it a run for its money. Yeah, like I'm actually scared now because they it can almost if it does the rear. And it staggers me, then I'm then I'm done. There should be nothing I can do. Um, but the thing is, I did run into people who had no clue how to use the thing at all. They probably just got it and was like, "Let's go into 650." And one dude literally just let me shoot him to death with Vulcans the entire time, and he dealt like mm-hmm. maybe 2,000 damage. To him. So, Oof. yeah. Uh, the other guy though knew how to basic combo. If he staggered me, then he would. Go in, downswing me, and then he just went and hit me with the the three prong beam saber and just like one shot me. And I was just like, okay, this thing's actually scary. When that happened, that was toward the end of the game. I was just like, okay, Uh-oh. if there's somebody who knows how to use this and actually knows how to play a cubelite, this thing's gonna be gross mm-hmm. against supports. Like yep. this thing's actually mm-hmm. scary. Because I'm assuming it also has maneuver armor on top of everything else, and that's. Right. That's my next question. What are the stats comparison and what are the skills comparison? Because that's going to be my final, like, oh, this is better than I thought it was or it's worse than I thought it was. There is a trade-off in the skills for the maneuver armor, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, So they both have space specialization. Um, They're both 650, obviously. The um, raid cubelet actually has more HP than the general. Um, (laughs) It has 1,500 additional health compared to the Cubelay's or the regular Cubelay's uh, base twenty thousand. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if that's just because raids get bullied or it's the Mark II, so it's you know better or whatever. Um, but uh, that's pretty interesting. Um, the resistances for the Mark II are more streamlined or baseline, I guess, or balanced maybe than the standard Cubelay. But uh, it's whether that's a good or a bad thing is remains to be seen. Uh, but it has uh, 28 resistance in both beam and ammo resist, um, whereas the Cubelay has 12 um, live ammo resistance, or, you know, um, ballistic, and the beam resist is 36. Huh. And uh, just a little quick math, just between those two, that is um, 48 resistance between us two total for the cubile whereas you get um was that 54 math 54 no 56 um total between those two resistances on the um wait uh, what you call it the mark two uh 28 oh 28 okay yeah um um so it has more ballistic but less beam Right. Hmm. That's kind of interesting. I'm I'm thinking, I'm like, how much beam can I... I oh, we'll get to that here in a sec. Yeah, 8% less, or 8 points less to be exact. Um, the melee modifier, or the melee resistance is 22. Ah, my focus! Yeah, on that, the that um, Mark II. Yeah, it does that sometimes. It's still out of focus. It'll fix itself, though, eventually. Um, and the melee resistance on the standard cubile, maybe on the standard cubile is 24, so you've got a two point difference between those two. Um, so overall, um, just in defenses, the Mark II actually has um, more points in its base defense pool than the standard cubile does. Um, let's see, that's another 22, so that's um. 78 de- defensive points in total. And um, so it's 
48. Oh no, maybe it is about the same. I said I said what 78? No, it's a little bit less. Yeah, because that's um 48 plus 24, so it's 72. Um is the math right? Wait, 72? Wait, say that again. Give, me, give me the three numbers. 48 plus 24. Yeah. 72. Okay. But so and then the other one's 54 or 56 plus 22. That's pretty easy. Uh, 78. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. So it does have a beat. Yeah. So that's interesting. Um, right there. Yeah, so... Um, the, as far as... Or, go ahead. Uh, well, let, let, let's skip ahead real quick. Just because I'm really mm -hmm. curious now compared to the defense. Because this is one thing you're definitely going to want to do is put on beam resist on this thing. So sure. what's its uh, slots for... Hard slots? Yeah. Sure. Um, so I'll start the standard key or the regular keyblade. Um, the top slots are 12, middle is 18, and bottom is 18 as well. And the Mark II has 20 in the top, um, 18 in the middle, and 10 in the bottom. So that's so I think um, the level 4 uses mid, eight. right? Level 4 beam uses mid? Uh, resist. Um, I think so. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to. I'd have to double check. But um, I'm... I, I, it's either that. No, I think I'm thinking of um, the level three. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, I think the the level three uses long eight long, and then I think it uses like twelve mid for the level four. So, um, at that point, you could actually get what is that? Another twenty. You could almost cap out as beam resist then at that point. Because hey, Gustav, do you have the game up? Uh oh, Gustav. Muted. Yeah, I'm here. I'm in um I'm in a match right now, sorry. Okay, cool, cool. But I am doing the key play. Nice. The normal one? <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. But um the uh so yeah, that's kind of interesting. So you can get almost maxed out or maxed out beam res. So I mean, that, mm -hmm. that's pretty much what you need at that cost, really. And having that much ballistic is really nice. Like that was the other reason I was like doing. Um, I think somebody had some ballistic one time. I, mm. I fired at one because I was hitting like sixty per uh, Vulcan on the MLRS. Like I've never hit that low. Like, I was like, oh, this is bad. <laughs> The dude like had like, mass, uh, well, no, this was the this was the shoulder. Like this was like, it mm, was like, like fifty to sixty damage. I was just like, uh, uh oh, and center mass was still only like, you know, eighty ninety. I was just like, oof. So there, it's it's a scary suit for the MLRS as far as just like, type advantage, ballistic, and the shoulders. Like, about the only thing I can do is missile it downswing and then run away <laughs> pretty effective given but at the same time it's mm. like i'm definitely not killing one like if i see a normal cube i'm just like oh you did he did i say but, he did yeah so okay but yeah I, I had a question about that because if you can't get that beam resist up then that would be really bad i mean i would argue right. that like this is a much more intuitive one for your average like Raid player too, because they have their initiate on their main weapon, and they have an extra weapon to mess around with when they close in. So you yeah, almost don't sure. really need to do those funnels unless you're just trying to keep people away, or like force mm -hmm. them to move yeah. into a position where you want to initiate them from better. Yeah, so, so having yeah. those tools like that, that's that's pretty scary. It, it's completely terrifying. Like, oh yeah. So, uh, but yeah, what's the rest of the stats? I'm guessing it has more melee damage. Oh, for sure. Um, so for the um, Kubelay, the range modifier is 45, and the melee is 25. And for the um, Mark II, the range modifier is 25, and the melee modifier is 20 or 40, rather. Um, so pretty interesting there. You actually lose 5% um, in the offensive stuff um, in the total. Combining the two, which is interesting. I mean, if you, but you got the second melee weapon, so 
Oh yeah, I'm more just talking about raw stats though. Oh I mean, yeah, yeah. You're you're right. The melee's there, but I'm just comparing the the stat uh, breakdowns. Yeah, but it's kind of interesting. So you lose a little bit of offense, but you gain more total defense because that's about how much yeah. you get from the uh, cubile as well, which is uh, pretty interesting. That's actually kind of cool. Um, it definitely needs speed. it. Oh, for sure. Um, top speed is 140 for both. Um, the Mark II has 10 more speed on its boosting movement. It's uh, 220 for the Mark II, 210 on the regular Keyblade. Um, they both have they both have 70 thrust. Um, turning rate is the same at 72. Um, sa oh. Same in space at 78. Um, you have level three melee priority, or you know, three tier three, whatever you want to call it, um, on the Mark II, whereas the standard Keyblade has two. Um, same counter. Respawn time's the same. We already talked about parts. Um, damage fall off is different than normal for the um, twin beam sabers on the Mark II. Generally, whenever you do consecutive attacks, the damage drops. Um, you do 100% damage on your first melee. Second one goes down to 50%. And then the third, in this case, hit would go down by go down 25% of the normal damage. Um, and then whatever, based on whatever the modifiers are and such. Um, but with the raid version, you do full damage on the first uh, swing, 80% of your damage on the second, and 64% on the third. Um, and that's only with the two beam sabers. The three prong seems to only have one attack, um, which is probably fine. Probably all you really need. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, but the melee is definitely where the Mark II shines. So the... Um, Interestingly enough, actually, um, the three pronged is worse than normal at certain ranges. Mm -hmm. um, so you sub 100% on both for the neutral. Um, for the side swings, the double beam sabers have a 80% damage modifier, um, whereas the three prongs have a 60%, and that's 15 less than the base. It's normally 75 on side swings. Um, and the downswing, which it shares with the Cubile, the with its standard weapon, the two beam sabers, um, the downswing modifier is 100% instead of 130. Um, and that's the same for both Cubiles, but the um, three-pronged downswing modifier is 170% damage. Whoa. No God wonder. Oh. It's choking. Oh. Yeah, for sure. Okay, that's kind of insane. That is that is stupid insane. Interesting so it's, too. Um, it's been a bit of a meme, right? When it comes to raids being too good, that they kind of like immediately nerf them. Bolin Oak literally got like an hour one, like revision, even though that was more incidental compared to this. But I do wonder, mostly just because it's another Keyblade and it's one of their bigger like double Zeta representations. I would assume if they're actually going to touch this for a good while either. I. Mm -hmm. I mean, right now, the Cubile, I feel, needs a nerf. And mm -hmm. I think this definitely needs a nerf. But at the same and time... There's, a, there's another there's another suit that we'll talk about later that kind of brings up that, that um, situation a bit more. But we'll get there eventually. But like the... Uh... Yeah, I'm just wondering if, you know, they're Cubile fans. You know, maybe just a little bit. A little bit of well, bias here, given it that's their that's their high cost that guy. <laughs> yeah, like you know, like they're they're definitely wanting to <laughs> yes, keep please. this keep this as a you know, like the MLRS right now, people say that should be nerfed and the Mark II as well, and they you know, they they barely gave the Mark II a slap on the wrist. So I'm wondering mm -hmm. if this Mark II and the other Cubile just they're like, Okay, we'll nerf it guys, here's two percent yeah. damage decrease. Oh, there we go with nerf. The MLRS yeah. also had a lot of stuff crop up around it, and the Mark II, like, it's still really fierce at its lower cost, but it's still getting bullied at higher costs the more stuff that they shell up. Also, with the MLRS, they technically didn't numbers buff it, but they buffed the MLRS not too long ago. One of those right. being the patch where you can tackle into somebody, and then instead of your missiles just yeeting up into space, your actual MLRS thing instantly 
just pops up and you can snap somebody with with your yeah. missiles now. And that is for any support. That is like your bread and butter last resort, mm. you know, as a cannon as Final a weapon drag. Like hit. Yeah. Yeah. So like mm. being able to do that is one of the reasons why the Zommel just straight up sucks because once somebody gets on you, you have almost no options other than swap to melee and try to melee them off of you because your cannon has to go uh, boom, you know. <laughs> and it, it kills me. They, they need to just either make it to where they all snap because, you know, it's a video game. Why not? They need to decide, <laughs> right. they need to decide what physics they really want and what physics they just don't really care about too much. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the um, but yeah, that's that's kind of my uh, my my take is they're probably gonna keep this being OP. Mm. Just saying. Oh, so um, Blaze is offering if we were to do like a room, he'd let us like mess with his because apparently he got one. Well, I mean, other than the uh. Like, I don't think it's going to play any... Well, what's the skills? Let's go over the skills real quick. Sure. Um, so, let me just get down there. So, both suits have level 2 dodge roll, or, you know, emergency evasion. Um, both skills have level... Or, both suits have level 1 balancer. Both have level 2 force injector. Both have level 2 um, flight control program. Um, both have high performance and back. Um, both have um, melee combo controller, but the Mark II has level two. Um, now the Mark II has maneuver armor level two. Um, whereas you have damage control level two on the Cubile. So does it uh, not have the damage control? No, it does not have damage I control. I called it. I called it. Yes, I, that's what I said to Gustav last night. I'm like, I don't feel like this thing has damage control. Like, I'm actually hitting it. I'm staggering it with Vulcans. So, okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that, that makes a whole lot more sense now. Because I was like... And that'll be relevant for the Mark IIs, is, or the uh, G, uh, MLRSs, rather. Um, since mm-hmm. the Vulcans are such... Or their strong point for uh, yeah. Stun, yeah. stunning maneuver armor. So, that'll be pretty relevant. Yeah. Um, also... They both have... Tristan, um, are good. Tristan actually has some... Remember, that I was talking about the Tristan might be a good raid killer. Mm. Oh yeah, it's gonna mulch go. uh, Mark Twos. It already does it to normal Keyblades. Like the Mark Twos are gonna be freaking suffering um, under uh, that Gatling fire. You know, it's kind of funny. Um, Everybody was, was questioning why they didn't buff the Tristan this patch, but I think it has its place. And this, you know, when it fits, it fits really well. Yeah, statistically, it's just doing really well, and people made it work. That's one of those seats that stuck just out of people, you know, trying to make something else stick other than the usual, and it actually happened because yeah. it's just it's yeah. just versatile enough to be used in certain situations, and in and in forest, it's just it sucks to have to deal with on top of everything else. Not to mention it's that just raw damage on monsters. Um, yeah, for sure, right? And it breaks maneuver armor like nothing else and now that we have something mm-hmm. that needs its maneuver armor broken then now they have a job yep Take out the yeah because the only way i would want them to really buff if they were going to do you know buffs to the attrition like the damage numbers seem fine um like the only things i would say is like speed up the animation on its downswing mm-hmm. um yeah and maybe adjust maybe lower like trade off some some of the damage on the beam rifle to make it a little bit more consistent or maybe like less bursty, yeah. but I mean, you know, that's not necessarily like the w- the way it's stuff set up is right now isn't a bad thing, because um, I don't know they they have plans for six fifty, um, and suits that play like the Tristan and the Cubile seem to kind of be what they're going for at that cost. It's just not fleshed out at all, and we don't really know what anyone's thinking at BB Studios, but it, it seems like they have some kind of plan that involves shooting things. Yeah, I, I want to pronging things. Oh gosh, um, but like the uh, I I really want to see the Tristan though get some QOL for that downswing for sure. Like that that is one of its weakest points. Is just like how weird it is to try to melee with that thing. But 
Also, the um, one stake sauce as... needs a melee range buff too on his neutral. <laughs> as far as the um, rest of the skills go, they both have um, leg buffer level two, um, shoulder buffer level three, and um... okay, the Mark II doesn't have this. Then the Cubelay does. The Cubelay has um, high performance radar level two, so. You have one more skill than the raid version in the form of uh, radar. That's kind of interesting. Well, it's um, another thing to kind of look at with that. So um, that level of high-performance radar makes your radar range 400, which is also the um, range of the normal Cubelay's beam main beam gun. Um, it's 400 also, whereas the Mark II is only 300. Oh. Oh, that's uh, that was going to be my next. Is there any differences in their weapons at all? Yep. Um, both have the same damage in the main beam gun. Um, the big note, the kind of big takeaways between the two Mark II um, has less, has half a second less time between shots. Uh, it's three and a half for the Cubelay's beam gun, three seconds for the Mark II. Heat rate stays the same. Um, you actually um, you recover from overheat faster with the Mark II. Um, by uh, one and a half seconds. The um, switch time is the same. The range is down by uh, 100 for the Mark II compared to the standard Cubelay. And um, those are the big differences there. Um, the beam sabers are exactly the same for the two times beam sabers. Um, you obviously, you obviously had a three prong on this one, which the other one doesn't have. But the ready up time is faster. Uh, it's half a second compared to 0.77 seconds, according to this. Um, but it does have a longer time after swings. It's four seconds before you can swing again compared to two and a half. Um, as far as the funnel options go, the Mark II actually does more damage than the um, standard Cubelay. With This is the pinch one, um, which I think is just the one that surrounds them yeah, normally the um, not the one that goes behind um and your base power with the mark ii is 375 um whereas the regular cubelay is 250 you also use 10 percent more heat um so how much heat what you use it at um 50 percent for the mark ii 40 percent for the uh, cubelay Oh, so you overheat just using it once. No, it shouldn't. It should only be half. Is it? I thought it was 50% per shot. I thought it was per shot. Where's that? Well, overheat? no, it should be for uh, for the funnel weapons. It should be activation. I know with the... Because uh, the Siege Zeon, one overheats immediately. Well, the, the Zeong, every time it shoots, mm -hmm. when it's doing the side stuff, it lowers your heat gauge. It's like, pew, pew, pew. And then if you hmm. do it too soon, uh, you'll actually overheat on your second one. Oh, hmm. So, um, I'm not sure. I've never noticed it to work that way. I, I always thought that stuff like that was based on activation, not shots fired. But um, you you play way more Xeon than I do, so I'll just defer to you on that. But I'm not sure. I'm wondering if the Evilay works the same way, because I know they've done some that do and some that don't. Hmm. Now the rear just overheats, of course, but I might try to turn my thing on real quick and test that out with the normal cubelay. I'm assuming they'll work the same way. But anyway, the uh, what's the um, rear and follow funnels? We'll say if you can't get a second shot out, it's kind of interesting though that you can just straight up deal almost as much damage, if not more, with the side funnels, even on a general. Like that's. That's actually quite a bit of damage. Well, the big note here, um, before we switch, is that um, the Cubelay does three shots with its attack, whereas the Mark II only does two. Oh, um, okay. Yeah. Ah, there it is. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. Cubelay Mark II also head. readies up faster. Um, it's half a second to ready up when you switch to it, which isn't really too big of a deal, honestly. Um, the stagger value is different. For reasons you shoot less, so um, right. 
it's uh, seven percent per funnel, um, so seven times six. Whereas the normal mark Kubla is five percent per uh, funnel. Um, and then the next one, uh, this is they call it siege on here, but someone that goes behind and stuns. Um, on the mark two, it, so they're pretty similar. It's it uses all the heat whenever you shoot it out, uh, but it's four hundred and fifty damage for both suits. Um, the swap time, the ready up time is still half a second for the Mark II compared to the um, three quarters of a second for the standard Kubelay. Range is 300 on the Mark II, or sorry, range is 300 on a Kubelay, where it's 250 on the Mark II. Um, so you have to be a little bit closer to hit with that one in comparison. Um, but the stagger values and the amount of shots fired are exactly the same. So. You have to be a little bit closer with that one if you're in the Mark II, which is interesting. Um, and for the funnels that follow, like rank, make a ring around a suit and follow, um, damage is the mm. same for both at 200, as well as a heat rate per shot at 30. Okay. Um, still fires five. Oh no, you can fire five bursts at that um, heat consumption. Um, yes. Fire rate and uh, stuff and overheat and stuff like that are the same. Um, range is 50 better on the Kubelay compared to the Mark II. Nice. Um, one thing to note, though, the Mark II has 1% more um, stagger on, on uh, each shot. So it's 9% on the Mark II compared to 8% on the Kubelay. Wow. Okay. It'll take four shots or three shots to stagger then? Yeah, it's essentially a difference of 6%, assuming if you hit enough every every uh, shot. So you can actually assuming nine times there's... six is 54. Yeah. You can stun in uh, two bursts. That's, that's actually really insane, actually. So back yeah, back to the whole Vulcans verse that you probably could actually stun a uh, MLRS if you hit them with all six twice before they yeah. can stagger you with Vulcans. That was Which, my yeah. Your brush pretty around. much means like what mm -hmm. maybe three taps if you miss a couple. Yeah. Oh yeah. Whereas a lot of times, even with the normal Uvula, I have to do um, about four on average. But um, I'm actually going into a practice right now to test out that people thing real quick. On a side note, which we'll point this out later, but now put it to 650 cost. Woo. Hey, so that's pretty cool. But anyway, I so. Hear that. Oh, sorry. No, I'm um, just saying I was happy to hear that yesterday because it's been a long time coming. Yeah, for real though, right? But um. So the um, I guess the main question here now is looking at the Kubelay Mark II um, that uh, Blaze uh, offered to have us just go in and use it. In my opinion, mm -hmm. I think it's going to be the obviously the maneuver armor is the big deal. That's the difference there for the damage control. Yeah. And other than that, though, it should pilot the same way. So knowing how the Kubelay feels, um, how do you feel about playing it more melee? Uh, emblem, and how do you feel like um, I mean, just having a little bit range, less range damage with how it is? I think, um, I think it, it looks very versatile, like just first impressions of how playing it. Um, I would say, like, you can just blend into your um, big dumb mob of cubelays and just literally do cubelate things and you'll be pretty efficient at it you'll just you'll just hit a little less hard and um who like you're definitely going to get tagged um i would probably build my um mark two similar to how my um current cubelay is maybe with the with a boost part i'd have to play around with it if i got it but um i would just treat it like if 
just like if I'm playing a Keyblade normally, if an opening presents itself to get that sweet melee damage in, you just knock them on their back and then hit them with your triprong, and uh, you know you're doing all the same stuff. Just knock down, um, follow follow um, funnel peppering while during the disengage, and then just switch to your prong and just murder them to death. Um, you're just more of, like the Mark II is just going to be more effective at um, uh, on the ground follow up than the Cubile is. And but outside of that, like obviously if you see openings, you can push and be aggressive because you have maneuver armor and stuff and double dodges to back you up uh, if necessary. So it, it's just it's just going to be a more melee um, or like melee follow up oriented Cubile. But I don't I don't think you you don't have to go super hard out of, or get out of line. Because if the if the um, supports in the group, you don't have the problem that a lot of, like most raids in the game have, where you have to get in there. You can just shoot through your teammates and uh, put pressure on the support through the um, through the ball of murder. And mm-hmm. you know, if anyone's like take the supports, you're just you're taking them with it while everyone else is doing their thing. Yeah. It, it seems like it's gonna be pretty solid. I mean, my thing too is I you know I I ended up with a situation where you can't beat them, join them. So I decided to play 650. Instead of doing the MLRS, I was just like, yep, I'll just play Cubelay today. And that's what I did most of the night. And um, a lot of times, like, I'd have two teammates in front of me. But there was one time I shot through both of my teammates and hit three dudes and got a kill on, like, either the middle guy or whatever way off in the distance. I was like, yeah, woo. You know, because, like, just being able to do that is insane. Like, and... They do the same damage, they have the same overheat, which is really nice, so you can get those four shots. You can get staggers a whole lot faster, so you can actually help your team stagger a guy really fast by shooting through them. So you actually have that benefit, playing at range, to help your teammate as a, kind of like even a supporty kind of style thing, right? And then the, um, the other thing that I'd like to point out is its maneuverability and how the Cubulate plays in general is just amazing. Like, just playing that suit feels so good. And when you get good with it, it is just insane. Like, when I'm popping off with the Cubile, I'm like, oh, yeah, dude, I'm full on new type, and it feels great. So with this thing, I don't know. I'm terrified as the MLRS right now. Like, literally, la- last night I swapped to the Cubile because I felt that scared to play the MLRS. And that's my suit, man. My suit. Mm. I got scared off my own suit. What's going on? So, uh, and then the other thing, and here's the scariest part. The reason why I'm so scared of them is I don't know that it's not a Cubile till I shoot till well I don't know that it's a Mark II till I shoot it and I see the damage numbers, mm. or it pulls out its three prong and I'm like, oh no, why did I get close to this thing? Like, <laughs> I mean, mm. l- l- because you know people are painting their normal Cubiles like Mark II and people are playing painting the Mark II like a normal Cubile. And I'm just like, there's no way to tell the difference. Yeah, the, the only difference? other way you would know is if you got your cursor on them long enough to actually like look at whether or not it's some um, advantage yeah. or not. Yeah, if it does. And yeah. by then they're already putting their funnels and all this other shit, and you're like, oh no! Yeah, that's why I'm like tapping them with Vulcans. I'm like, bit it. Oh, okay, okay, you're safe. You're safe. Missile time. Let's go. And I go ham. But like, if I if I put like two two Vulcans into one and I saw like ninety damage pop up, I'm like, oh no, oh no, we getting out. We out. We out. <laughs> Oh man, it was so it was like it was scary though. Like I'm actually and forget playing anything else. Like you're not gonna play a um you're not gonna play the Hama Hama. Like you're just gonna get decimated by that thing. And that's kind of the big deal. Like your your big answer to the Cubile in the first place is any other suit is it doesn't have maneuver armor. So Right. And then now it does. And it's that's insane. And um, kind of an, as an example, have you played the High Gog recently? Not recently, but you definitely see it a lot more. I mean, I am just, it's one of my favorites now to play just because they gave it damage control and maneuver armor. And it's like, what? So not only do you have the maneuver armor, but you have the damage control, and you're just like, I don't care, man. Like, you can hit me with everything. I'm not going to get stopped. And then you just. You know, you shoot them with your chest missiles that you can fire while on the move, and you get the stagger, and then you mm-hmm. smack them. I mean, that's pretty much how this feels. You're you're gonna be on the move. You hit them with your follow funnels as you're just approaching them because they can't do anything right. about it. 
because maneuver armor, and then you just melee them and then just kill them. Like that's that's the biggest thing. Anything that has maneuver armor and has something they can fire at the same time, and when you get good at doing that, like they're monsters. And the cubelay is the easy one of the easiest ones. Like my problem with the Jarja, for instance, is mm -hmm. doing that approach thing. I am bad at approaching with its missiles, but it can do it. And there's people who can do it. And the cubelay is real easy. So that's one reason why I'm terrified because it, it's not that hard to do that kind of combo. So, but overall, um, I think we've got a new king of raid at 650. Tom Robbie just got dethroned. Actually, yeah, I definitely think the Mark II has the versatility to um, beat out the others. I mean, especially the uh, A1. Um, and I, I could agree with the um, Hammurabi as well. Um, like, I, I personally still think that um, you're still going to have the usual raid issues, even with the uh, Mark II. Like, don't get me wrong. There's still, like, four to five generals on the enemy team, mm -hmm. um, depending on, like, what what's going to happen. Because, I mean, if, if, the, if the supports are too scared to come out, it's just going to be another general in their spot. Yeah. Um, so it's just more damage that's um, cool. coming in at you. So, I mean, yeah, and, and if 650 is all Cubelays, they're doing the exact same thing that you're doing, but, you know, the majority of them have type damage advantage, or has a, have a damage advantage, and your beam resistance is lower. Um, so it, it's still going to fucking hurt. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah. at the very least, you, you do it, you do it uh, just as good as they do, for the most part. I actually think the uh, you know the the benefit of the A1 is that it's super tanky, but I think this is even tankier than the A1. So I think this wins out in that department, and then it also has the damage that like the Hammurabi has. So yeah, like I think it's best of both. Literally, mm -hmm. each each thing that I like about both of those suits just in one. Why I really want to do another ten spin for it? I'm just like mm -hmm. gonna get baited, and then they're gonna come out with like the Zusa or something. Next week. It definitely, it definitely has the the passive raid ton on it. Like the minute you see the tr the three prong, I feel like you're gonna get focused a lot. Oh yeah, pull that out at your own risk. <laughs> yeah. If you're you a better, unique color, pull that shit out, you better kill him. You better hope you're the same color as every other teammate you have, because if you pull that out and you're a different color, and you're like, oh, oh, the green guy, oh, he's the one. Focus it's funny there. because like. Anyone who was doing the alternate colors on the original Kibale, I bet they changed theirs so that they didn't get the extra aggro now that the Mark II's are up. Oh, yeah. But, um... Yeah, I think this suit's amazing. I, and, and, Emblem, you kind of answered my question um, that I was about to ask. What do you think it, you know, how it compares to the others and mm. what other options we have? And, um... Uh, Gustav, I have the same question. Do you? I mean, do you think it, it is the new king, essentially, at this? For now, yeah, I think, and it's it's already starting to happen because 650 moves very quickly when it comes to how the meta is kind of established. So people are having their honeymoon period, but I think they're getting clapped out of doing multiples of the raid version for the Mark II. Oh yeah, and when it's by itself, and the minute people see what it is they get mashed out really fast. So it's it's the same kind of bullshit that you do to deal with the Keyblade, except that it has maneuver armor this time, so like it's a little bit scarier when it's like zooming at you. In yeah, that regard, though, um, it's going to be easier to bully than the Keyblade, I feel. Um, just because like, your, the your minute main it stops, threat... It's just easier to keep it still. Well, no, not even when it's stopping. The main threat to Keyblades right now to Tristan... And yeah. I mean, it doesn't give a fuck about your maneuver armor because yeah. it's mowing you down if it's Gatling gun. It's, yeah. the, um, it's the philosophy of um, just raw output versus the stun meta. Like, hey, well, I'm still shooting at you and you're going to die. <laughs> like, you just yeah. not, and not only that, but everything that the Tristan has has a high um, stagger value mm -hmm. uh, yeah. modifier. Like the club, the beam rifle, the bullets. It's it's doesn't care. It's just going to kill you faster because you don't have. Um, damage control to give you that time to be able to close the gap or get the stuns in. Um, you're at you, you get you have sixty percent less stagger threshold than the um, Cubalay, and maneuver armor doesn't add to that. It just makes you, it just gives you more defense. 
uh, when you're when you're in a boost. So like I I think and I I like I was gonna piggyback and say like um if the question character was characters. yeah <laughs> is the Mark II king like maybe of raids at that cost? But oh, yeah, I think yeah, a yeah. play should beat out a Mark II for the most part. Um, the Tristan will probably have a cakewalk against the Mark II. Mm-hmm. Um, they both have double dodge rolls. The Tristan is a general. It has really good stagger buildup options. Um, it's just going to stop you in its tracks and murder you to death and laugh while it does it. Yeah, um, it's just one of those things where it's like you could probably go toe to toe to Kibale, but the minute a Tristan's like, "Hey, you need some help, buddy," you're like, "Oh, it's time yeah. to disengage and do raid things because uh, those two v ones with the kind of suits that are in that cost, you don't want to fuck with that." <laughs> I mean, here's, here's how I... Crazy. Oh, yeah, for real, though. Unless you're a god at it. But, like, the, the, here's how I see it going. Two ways. Either we have a Tristan on the team just about every time, and they're actually going to focus down... Like, I'm talking, you know, of course, S-A-plus minus a plus kind of play. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and they actually focus down, or even, you know, clan matches. Yeah, they're they're going to focus down the... Answer. Yeah, they're going to focus down the Mark II... Um, or we're just not going to see a support on a team and you're just going to have a whole team of Cubulays versus a whole team of Cubulays. Yeah. Because, I mean, literally at this point, that's that's kind of the way it's looking because if if the <laughs> Mark II Cubulay is too good, then, like, you kind of was saying, like, nobody's going to want to play support. I even swapped off my support. And I was like, good luck, dude, in the Hamahama. You're, you're screwed. I'll protect you, though. Don't don't worry. I'll protect you. I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait. He's going to come around the corner and I'm going to beam him yeah. to he understands that pain. He's just bait now. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's and that's what I use it for. And literally every game, I would see one going at it. I'm like, that Cubile is going a little hard toward that Hama Hama. I don't know if it's a Mark II yet, but I'm going after him. And then normally I'd be like, oh okay, yeah, you're a Mark II, get wrecked. And then I just like beam him, you know, break his maneuver armor with my four shot beam, uh, and then just straight up destroy him because once I break the maneuver armor, then I can tag him with the main beam. Then I swing twice, then I back up, then tag him with the main beam again, hit him with the side stuff, melee him, and he's dead. And it's just like, cool. Or sorry, the rear ones. And then melee him, and he's dead. And it's just like, yep, that was easy. Next. So, I'm kind of I'm kind of curious to see if there's a meta shift to the point that um, we just don't see Cubulays in 650. Or, sorry, we see only Cubulays in 650, and no supports, and no raid. With the way it's going, I mean, I, I think it could very well be a possibility. Um, they, I, I still think they probably need to buff the Zeta Gundam, or double Zeta Gundam. Go, go ahead and let it transform, um, at the very least. I don't. I think at giving it to G-Fortress would not um, hurt anything at all. Who cares if it's a um, breakdown transformation? Um, they need to give it some more mo- mobility options. Um, and I think having like secondary weapons in a transformation mode um would help out the suit a good bit make it a little make it very interesting to play um but they they need to do something more suits would help too mm-hmm. yeah i mean that's really the big thing and kind of on that which i mean we're going to cover this here in a minute in the patch notes but also i'm wondering if what i just said will even happen because we've got 650 this week guaranteed because it's the new suit but the way they've changed it we might not have much 650. So, I mean, with 650 going, you know, everybody's going to adapt and keep adapting as it goes. But mm-hmm. what happens if we don't actually see 650 for one week, maybe two weeks? I mean, obviously, we're probably going to see it in certain hours, but depending on when you play, you might not even see it for an entire day. There's days I don't see 400 games or even 500 games. So, like, here the other day, all I saw was 200 for the low cost every time, and then obviously 650. So it was just like, well, I'm not really playing because it's 200 jungle through that. <laughs> um so that's fair. like if it if it ends up because they have three uh from I, I I didn't get to check today which I guess I'm I'm on so before it swaps I, I am going to check but someone was mentioning that are you happy that yeah they've only got three still I was like what someone was saying for the 5v5 stuff they were going to have four games uh someone was mentioning that to me and I was like I don't I, don't, I didn't I'd love anywhere. for there to be a um guaranteed 5v5 in every lobby as well um it doesn't necessarily have to be Arctic base for the force jungle, five, but, but yeah, rip, but, rip uh, 5v5 having, jungle. Yeah, having some kind of 5v5 and every rotation would be nice just because six sixes feel a bit too clustery. Yeah, that's 
But I mean, like during the day, it still looks to be three games, and they're all five v five. So uh, nothing seems to have changed there. But by the way, though, on a side note, jungle, rest in peace, five v five jungle. Now six v six, unless you see it during the day. So oh, they changed that. Yeah, jungle's now not always five v five. Yeah. Oh, rough. Yeah, I think they're actually kind of for me. It makes a little bit more sense just because of the size of the map, like. There's a lot of places for people to be, so having some extra bodies to just like run into is kind of nice. I, I can kind of agree with that, but then it, it, it I already compare it to Deserted City, because mm -hmm. I feel like there's always somebody around a rock on the other corner, and I can't get to them in time before they die. Something so, else shows up, yeah. Yeah, so I'm just like, it, it just feels like Deserted City, which Deserted City is already like my least or second least favorite map, depending on the day. So, but anyway. Uh, any final thoughts on the Cubulay Mark II? Yeah, um, it's not about the Mark II, but um, just to piggyback on um, kind of Cubulay's taking over. Um, if you if you want a hot take on what I think the um, first base six fifty support's gonna be, um, I'll I'll call right now that it's gonna be the um, Cubulay Mark II EP. And it's gonna be a support, no, you know, and uh, even hotter take. And I have one dodge roll. Yeah, that's no, that's exactly what I said. High five. That's what I said last night. I was yeah. like, we're getting the mass production, uh, cubelay with the cannons or whatever, and it's gonna have one dodge roll. Let's go. That'd be hype. Is that the same I'm one that you just that. said? Um, yeah. Because I just thought because I, I said Mark Mark Two EP LPO Puru. LPO Puru. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But like, um, yeah, that that cubelay would be fantastic. We get the support one dodge roll. Let's go finally. If it can't dodge roll, I'm gonna be so mad. Like, there's Time no reason. There's no reason. But here's here's my here's my prediction on how it's gonna work. It's gonna be set up exactly the same. Extra secondary mm -hmm. cannon weapons, same thing. Only all of the funnels have like 10% heat rate so you can just funnel for days and have like another 100 range. Oh, you're talking about the mass production type. Yeah. Okay, so what what's the what's, what's the difference? It was the mass production type I, I though. I thought yeah, it? I thought that's what it was. Who were uses a Mark II as well. So, it... mm, okay. Yeah, all of the um the other Puru numbers like um 3 through uh 12 or however Easy many there were, please. they all use the mass production units. Um oh, Okay. LPO so, LPO uses her own. Like realistically, what probably happened because they hate supports, they'll just release the mass production and and staple Puru's um, pilot suit to it, it yeah. or, or like her clothes <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. But um, so what, what is if I want to have faith, they're good, madam. What, what what is the main difference between the mass production and LPO Puru's? Um, Puru, uh, hers is just a Mark II. It's just a support in the game, and it has their name on it. Like oh, they okay. do with other suits, yeah. It's just going to be an ace pilot variation of the Mark II, but it's going to be our third Cubelay, and it's going to be a support. Yeah. So you know, red paint job. They probably dumb it down because birds. it's a support. Yeah. The yeah. funnels will probably be more effective. I won't mm -hmm. have the silly three prong thing. Um, probably have melee pr priority one, um, but everything else would be more more Cubelay like. Probably have more range on the main beam. Yeah. Um, and stuff like that. Yeah, that's probably, what got faster probably give it a third funnel electric. option. That's and it'll say. finally have the proper funnel range for once only. Sorry, fourth yeah, funnel like, option. My bad. Yeah. Yeah, and then and then you have like yeah, like good range on every funnel thing, and every like the heat rate's going to be boss. I hope. So instead of like the two times, you know, like the side funnels shoot five times or something, and only take like ten percent heat rate. Oh, and by the way, I checked in the game. The funnels, every time they fire, it uses heat. So it's 40, 40, and then 40. Okay. So mm, Okay. But the thing is, you should regain, since it's 50%, you should regain just enough so it doesn't overheat. But you should be able to do it twice in a row if you do the side funnels, just like the normal gotcha. people are. Um, Which actually, but the amount of burst damage that it has, that's actually pretty intense. Like, if you think of the extra damage... And it's just one, two, and then back to you, and then you go one, two again, real quick. Like, that's not bad for fighting supports. Again, giving it even a better reason for that. Now, you're going to do less damage to generals, but you could even fight a raid as well pretty easily with that. 
Um, but yeah, I I agree. I I want, but I kind of want the one with the cannon. So I I'm kind of going to say the mass production one, just because give me the cannons. I mean, too. I think we'll get both. Um, but I personally think the mass production is going to be a six hundred six fifty cubile. Um, and that's why I say the oh, okay. first base six fifty support will be the um, LPO Puru um, Mark II. That'll work. Uh, you, you know what I'm you know what I'm guessing though, because it's it's they like generals so much. LPO Puru is just going to mm-hmm. be a better Jubilee at 650, and it's going to be a general instead. Oof. Yeah, that's that's my that's my hot take on it. Is they're just like it'll have that. all that stuff and they'll just make it a general. And they're just going to make it a general, <laughs> and then it's going to be yeah. just a superior Magnum. Jubilee. It'll just be the Magnum's range, hot like, take. Stress version of it. Mm-hmm. It, that's just like the cold, harsh reality of GBO2 is Magnum's yeah. take on it. Yeah. Mine's is like Mine's just optimistic. Like, you don't want like... people to not roll on it. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm just like I'm just looking <laughs> forward to the sad future. I've been I've been burnt too many times as a support player. Not gonna lie, if they did my version, like I bet they would make more money. Um, oh yeah, like the first support for dodge roll, like that'd be insane. Yeah, I think like people would uh, go hard on it. I might, uh, you know, I've already said yesterday that I'm pretty much like done with spending any of my own money into it but i might drop like five dollars or ten dollars just to get a few extra tokens like that would be that would be something that i'd do, go for as a support cubelay unless they somehow came up with a better mlrs variant or something that came out <laughs> but if they give the they give the uh, gpo2 the nuke there we go oh my god i'd i'd, I'd spend money for that <laughs> you start getting like cod level like Perks and stuff for <laughs> and they just give us the nuke as a thing for the GPO two. Yeah, has like its own built in super. <laughs> oh, that'd be awesome. But um, but yeah. Anyway, uh, any final takes on the Cubelay Mark two? That was our hour rant on the uh, like Mark two yeah. Cubelay. <laughs> Pretty much. Okay, it looks like that's working. So boop. Okay, so let's. Go into the patch notes. Sorry, I was wrong. You don't say the last minute. Okay, yes. so patch notes. Um, we've actually got quite a bit to cover, so we'll kind of skim over some of this, like the actual buffs and stuff. Um, I went ahead and brought up everything. Apparently, there was a bug with the um. Weapon, okay, they just, the Ramzagok main weapon, claw shield. The actual bug? Oh, was it, was it just a language setting thing? Oh, okay. Hmm. Well, that's me. Okay, get that out of here. Like um, text mixes or whatever. So they also confirmed a bug with uh, clear within a certain time, a condition for earning the reward for the PvE stuff. Exactly the same order. Decimal point, it was not treated as an achievement condition, and the achievement reward could not be earned. There was people who couldn't actually earn it, even though they got the right time. What the fuck? So, oops. And Like, uh, we'd be right on the dot, and it was just, like, not quite there. Yeah, so apparently you could somehow not get it. So anybody who actually got the proper time should have the rewards now. Mm. Um, they should have shown up for you. So, there you go. Okay, so first thing on the list, match related. We just kind of talked about this, but what do you guys think about the cost limit change? So as of right now, well, as of yesterday and previous setup, it was um, guaranteed to have the highest cost uh, room at all times. So there would always be a 650 room. Now what they're Mm -hmm. doing is, um, since the Mark II is a 650 suit, uh, there's always a 650 room for this week, and the next week, say they come out with a 450 suit, there will be always a 450 room in rated matches at all times of the day. Mm-hmm. So that's how it's working now. I think this is awesome. Kind of interesting, though, that it would be always for the new suit, and yeah. there's probably going to be the new suit spam going on, which, I mean, that's always nice for you know people who get it. But at the same time, that they can lead to some dirt matches for the first few days, um, but I, I think it's good. I'm glad we're not going to see 650 at all times of the day. Well, at least after this week. 
it's interesting that they told us the the suit cost ahead of time as like a byproduct of that announcement. It's kind of a shame that that was probably going to be the only exception they're going to make for that, though. Yeah, that's true. They just wanted everybody to know that, hey, by the way, it's not a bug. It's, yep, it's <laughs> just that it's circumstantially, this is just a 650 suit, so it's going to look the same. Yeah. So this week, it's still the same. Don't, don't, don't rage at us. I mean, they had to say something. You know, everybody will. I mean, there's probably yeah, some people who have because who but, reads these yeah. notes? Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. there's somebody like, well, I mean, that would be the thing though. Who like if they would have to read the notes to know that it was a change. So, no, they would just keep complaining like usual. Like, still all six fifty okay, lobbies. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, what's with the six fifty lobbies? No, we changed. I mean, they're they're already complaining about the Cubile in friend thing. So, like, that being a byproduct of that probably doesn't make them much happier. Oh yeah. But any hot takes with that one? Um, <laughs> I don't know what hot takes, but um, them doing the top rating was probably just a mistake in general. Like, even even if we assume that the 650 release was handled properly, um, I, I still don't think they should have the um, top end be in every single lobby, especially with how hard it is for newer players to get access to suits. Um, in general, um, like that's one that's that's essentially one room that like again, unless they get lucky on pools or well or whatever, they're essentially completely locked out of. Um, and there's some cases where it'll be on and off the case for new players, depending on what they release. But I mean, like I feel like that's mainly going to be like maybe 550 and up, um, just to kind of guess. Um, they should be relatively fine for like 500 and below, uh, depending on what suits come out. But I think it makes more sense for it to be based around the new suit so people have somewhere to play around with their new toy. Um, or, you know, farm people who are playing with their new toy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, and get free points. But, um, like, it, it, it was brought up in chat by Lotus, and I definitely agree too. They should definitely do that in quick match as well um mm. yeah like they, oh yeah un unless like unless it's just red wrong um them just doing it in rated um seems like a oversight on their part it should definitely be both yeah part of the transparency means having to be thorough so even if it's mm -hmm. technically that way they should have said so i think yeah do they say it i i think in the actual post prior to this that uh, they did say it would just be rated but um, because I remember mentioning that when I was doing the update video. Well, I know in the most recent update, or they say in rated match or in rating matches, we adjusted yeah. the cost limit. They don't bring up quick at all. Um, so they probably Which adjusted it for rated then, matches. Yeah, that's a bit of a shame. I mean, like... quick is already set up like that. Like sometimes you'll have a five fifty ground, and that's mm. the highest cost. So like. Mm -hmm. Quick already just does random, but the problem is, is they don't want to have too many rooms in Quick because then you know it spreads the community too thin. Mm -hmm. But I mean, here we go. Here, here's a spot to plug this idea. Uh -oh. Um, here's my idea for this. What if they just did away with these four room things or three room things, and you had a choice: choose space or ground. Okay. Then after you choose space or ground, you pick your cost. Now, yes, that creates a ton of rooms, but every time it's a random map, period. None of this always seeing the jungle and port base moist at all times of the day, pretty much. Mm. Um, and it's always a random ground map, but you pick your cost you want to go into, and you go in and you compete at that cost for rated. Now, yes, it's going to cause wait times to go up, but I'd be curious to know how much it causes wait times to go up. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I mean, if they did this as an experimental thing to just try it for a week or two, I think it would be kind of be cool. But, I mean, they probably have to, you know, design the system to do that, which it probably isn't. But, I mean, I think that would be kind of an interesting thing. So you just, you know, that way you always pick your cost that you're good at. And then at that point, you have to adapt right. to the map. Right. So I think that's that kind of goes into, like, when we talk about waiting times, part of that waiting time is going to be map dodging at the right. same time. Yeah. Battle operator sees a public test uh, server. 
for them to play around and stuff like that and let they the really players do. mess around in there and do it too. Um, I think that goes I, I back think something to, like that'd be cool. I think that goes back to what they actually thought like the scale of this game was going to be though. Mm -hmm. Like how much attention they really thought it needed or really deserved considering how much they put into it. So I guess here's another question. Do you think there's a better way to do that? Or because I, I, again, this was just going to be a random Reddit slash Twitter post that I was going to add them and be like, yo, here's an idea. Mm Hmm. And hopefully yeah, I mean, it sounds it. very akin to like how um, Battlegrounds 2 does it where they let you pick like the mode that you want. Um, you can even, I think, pick specifically what maps are like um, scenarios you'd prefer. Or you can just go pretty much all random if you want, which is another thing that would be pretty neat. Like if you just want to be thrown in the general queue and just smacked on whatever, that would be nice for them to have like a more specific um yeah, there we thing go. for you to be able to choose. Uh, thank you for that. Yeah, that that's a good one because like that way you you know like I said, pick your cost or you're like I don't care, mm -hmm. you know, all the cost. And then yeah, so anybody who just really doesn't care and they want to play ground rated, they just, somewhere here yeah, we go. They just get thrown in a room. That's that would be nice. And then, I mean. Here's a, like, so every everything about making it faster to get into the game always feels mm. a lot more important, right? So I'm sure they're keeping track of that metric, um, like how many games they're getting per like I don't know mm -hmm. hour time segment of uh, lobbies. Um, so that's probably something relevant that they're keeping up with. But I um I could see like two things that um to maybe cause contention, um. One, like, I know you mean it for a for like rated matches and stuff, but I could see like a kind of thing where, um, you would just get like some kind of response or be like, well, you can already do that in custom matches, um, or something like that, you know, where like you just get the PR response and they didn't even read what you said, or yeah. they're just like, oh, yeah, we already offer that feature in custom matches. Thank you for your input, though. Um, and then, like, the other thing that I that I think BB is trying to do is they're trying to force variety into player base. Um, and yeah. that idea kind of um, uh, reinforces... Is complacency the best way to put it? I'm not really sure. Like, um, I, I just don't think they want players to... I mean, honestly, like you could say that the meta is pretty stale already, but like, do you think that might cause the meta to stale even more? Um, because people would like people already dodge um, particular costs in the lobbies, and if you have access to all of them, you're pretty much never going to play certain cost ever again, right? Um, yeah, that's and I mean, true. maybe yeah. that's a problem of I mean, that's BB's problem, and they need to balance their game better. But that might just that like that might crank it up mm -hmm. to like a thousand um, in that regard. It's balanced, but it's also the fact that they're trying to do this in something that's ultimately still a gotcha game. Mm -hmm. that's True. A big problem. Like they don't have any means of you to actually get these suits to actually cover those ranges, especially when we're talking mm -hmm. about higher cost. I mean, and I would. I feel like it's because it's like, well, gotcha by itself is already pretty bad. Topping on other ways to buy these outright would just kind of make it seem even worse. But I don't know how few people people really feel about that kind of thing because I feel like there's a lot of free to game free to play games that have like premium services that, despite people being kind of bitter about them, still buy into them because they know they're going to be continuing to play the game over time. And I feel like this game in particular, like we we still have GBO one's like track record and like lifespan to go on. The fact that it actually went on for like another generation by the time that it was um introduced, mm -hmm. but I'm still surprised it's even got on this long, considering that it's like strictly UC and we have all the people that are like, "Where's my Barbatos and wing and all that shit?" Like they're very lucky. That M bomb did kind of like flims as flimsily as it did, and like that a lot of its features kind of got foiled by the pandemic. Because I think otherwise, that drop off that we saw in like week one probably would have stayed that way. 
And we wouldn't have gotten a lot of new players or like people on category streaming and playing this game. Yeah, that's kind of true. I will say though, as far as the to kind of answer your question about, do I think it would be make it more stale? I think the problem is, which I, okay, I, I will say I'd be that guy. I'm gonna play four. Like if I want to climb in rated, I'm gonna play four hundred and Dom Barrage every game. Mm. You know, right? Like right now, if I see four hundred cost on mountain, I'm in there playing Dom Barrage every game. That's it. I'm gonna fight for that Dom Barrage spot if I wanna if I wanna That's get my win. Gonna die, uh. Like because you know if we're taking three supports in, we're taking three supports in. I'm playing that Dom Barrage. I'll carry. I'll carry the weight. I don't care. <laughs> I, I could. That's that's my jam, dude. Like, yes, that's what I can do. So I'll, I'll do it. But the thing is, um, if I'm really trying to climb, when I was doing my A climb back or A plus climb back when, just to just to do that, I mm -hmm. literally just wouldn't play. Like, yeah, he was giving entire lobbies or like I was, rotation. Yeah, I'd be like, okay, guys, we're going to a Path of Exile for the next two hours. We'll be back on this, so let's swap category. You know. <laughs> and and then I'd come back in two hours and be like, okay, these suck. Okay, what game are we playing now? Let's see. What have we not played today? A little more Path of Exile? I don't know. Let's do something else. You know. And that would just be, that would just be it for pretty much the entire day. And like every time that it was a bad cost and or a bad map, right? That was the other thing. Like it would be four hundred, but it'd be like on um, desert, and I'd just be like, I'm not feeling desert today. Okay. What are we doing for the next two hours? You know, and that, like, I can't, I can't stand it. And then finally, I just got fed up when I was, like, right next to it, like, 20 points. I was like, okay, guys, it's Deserted City. We can play the Zaku Cannon. Let's go. Let's just get it done with, you know. And, and, and then we did it. But it was just, like, people already do that. And the reason why I brought this up in the first place is I know people who have quit because of that. Like, there's people right. who don't really play the game anymore because... A, there's nothing but 650, so they're trying to fix that problem. So they're at least trying, right? But the thing is, they'll go for, you know, they come home from work, and they have two hours to play before they either got to get ready for bed or take care of the kids or something like that, right? And mm -hmm. they got the two hours, and oh, it's cost that I can't even play, so I can't even play rated. And, you know, again, back to the customer quick match thing, and I, I definitely will try to, obviously, there's only so much room you can fit in a tweet, but, like, um, I don't know, I guess I'll just do one of those tweet threads or however you do that, and I guess you comment on your own thing. What Anyway, point being, um, like, you know, people will just come home, see that, and that's it. That's their own t only time. And to do quick match, well, they're not progressing in their rating, and that's what they want to do is get their rating up. So why play quick mm -hmm. match if your goal is to get your rated up? Why play customs if your goal is to even get DP? then that means you want to do quick match or get your rated up so you can get more DP. And then, so they don't have a reason to play that day. And then, you know, they're like, but I still got to get my dailies done. So I guess I'll go hop into one of those A wins, B loses thing. Right. Like for people whose objective is the climb, and this is, I know I bring up Mbon a lot, but there's a, there is a, um, what the hell? Shut it. But there is a um, exchange that was like, <laughs> What's going on for um this game is like how's ranked and all this stuff and they're like well ranked is dead most of us play customs and he's like well damn that's rough so like there's pretty much nothing going on thanks for saving me sixty and like people who are really dedicated to that game are kind of like confused because it's just like well it's, the game is still really great but like for some people the climb is important yep. especially considering that it's a competitive game right so having to skip out and do all that other stuff. Like, it doesn't make sense to me because I, I like it, right? Like, I play this game all the time. And as a streamer, I don't skip. I kind of just force myself to go through it. So, like, for me, there's always something going on. But for other people who are more specific, you know, like, as a result, because I do that, I've been in A and I'm a good way in the A, but I've never hit it. Haven't touched it. It's been several years. Like, I just outright between my skill and just like really rough matches or like not doctoring my um or like nursing my rating like there's a lot of that going on and at least like the competitive side of this game is still alive but i think they really do need to overhaul the way that you get into games especially when we talk about like we're only in s minus now 
And once we start to bump that up even higher, like that frustration is only going to grow, especially if they still have that decay rate or if they make it even harsher for like some of the higher ratings too. Because now that we know that it's going to be, um, the client's going to continue over for um, PS5, we know that we at least have more time. Yeah, that's that's really cool that they just said that too. It's just like, hey, by the way, PS5, let's go. And mm -hmm. I'm kind of interested to see how this runs on PS5. Like, do we actually get good performance overall? Like, so, is it, is it a I don't know. Better? Was this was this on the um the subject thing for today, or was that something that we just kind of like looked at and we're like, oh, hey, all right. Um, I, I don't I don't think this is on this post. I think it's on the previous post, but we could mm -hmm. we could talk about it. Okay, because I was gonna say like the the bigger takeaway was that they said higher frame rate, um, some of the rendering is gonna be a bit faster, but the draw distance and other things that would be considered like performance or like advantageous for matches, they didn't like put it that way specifically, but that's kind of how I read it. Is that it's like I agree draw distance and stuff isn't gonna get changed because they don't want PS4 players to be at a disadvantage. Yeah. I feel like frame rate is relevant. Um, frame rate would be more there. relevant if the the um, servers weren't garbage. Yo, and see that's <laughs> so. that's what I'm wondering. Like, are we going to so, see better performance as put it that way? But I think they they feel that like that difference is negligible. You're just seeing that lag and all these like shitty um, inputs or exceptions from the game in smoother frames. <laughs> yeah, like I mean, if you play like practice. Yeah. Cause I'll say I'm, yeah, on jungle, I'm, I'm on jungle right now, and like mm -hmm. all the pop in and stuff that goes on. Like they said they weren't gonna change pop in, but it's just it affects the frame rate. All this extra bullshit on top of the um, particles and stuff. Like I'm on a baseline like PS4 slim or whatever. So I've definitely seen a dis difference. For example, looking at like Captain Chad's stream or something when he's got a pro and it's like even even on his it kind of struggles a little bit on jungle. But it's noticeably more consistent in the higher frames. Oh yeah, if you look at specs, like I got a day one PS4, and when I jump in the water on poor base, moist, it's like, it's like, <laughs> like a, a friend of mine was over, and he was like looking at it, and he was like, dude, your PS4 is about to die. Look at it, chug, man. You're going at like five frames a second right now. Because there was like Jet. everybody in the water. It was a mosh pit in the water, pretty much. And like... Swim party. Yeah. So like with water, was it... It, it got like it got like five frames pretty much, and I was just mm. like, "Oh man, I think my PS4 is gonna is the game gonna crash? Like, is this lag or is this just my PS4 chugging?" But it was bad. Like, there's been a couple of times if there's too many things going on in that water, then it gets it gets really chugging. Uh, yeah, it's it's bad. But point being is you got that, and then if you look at the specs for the PS4 Pro, that's a huge mm. leap. Like. Another game that I use, for example, that takes a lot of processing power is Path of Exile. Like, I already talked about how I couldn't even move and just died. So, yeah. And then you look at somebody with a PS4 Pro, and they're like, well, it's lagging quite a bit, but, you know, it's still playable. Yeah. You know, it was still almost unplayable, but, you know, it was towing that line. And now with PS5, okay. though, the hardware in the PS5 is just insane. Like... And for the yeah. price that they're given, I'm just really surprised that both the Xbox and that, like, it, that's some good hardware on both. And it's, mm -hmm. like, that's impressive that they're chugging those out for that price. Like, I think that they realize how long these generations are lasting now, so they can kind of afford to put in a little bit more. Just for longevity's sake. There's not, that's not to say that the, um, the day one models won't get um, usurped, right? Or they won't have their own problems. But I think that's another part of the market is that they are they're comfortable with doing these big form factor, like just get the hardware in there, make sure it works. And then over time they'll slim it down again, right? Yeah. And those will be a little bit smoother and we'll we'll get a pro version that probably does even more stuff. PS five pro. Well yep. what's what's really crazy though is just like, you know, in in a desktop, if you were gonna buy a desktop right now that's the equivalent of the PS five or even the um uh, Xbox, uh, I always joke, I have Series X, Sex, the Xbox Sex, there we go. Um, like, if you're, if you're going to buy one of those, like, it's like an 800 to $900 PC, pretty much. And just, they're charging, what, 500 bucks? Yeah. Like, that That's is true. impressive. And the reason why it is, you know, you're almost a $1,000 PC, because the other thing is, mm. is you don't have all the problems that a PC has. Like, the actual chip that everything's on 
is path so that it's meant for just gaming. And that's yeah, it's all part. dedicated. Yeah, so like there's, there's no always those people every pathway. generation is like, we could try to let's try to turn this into a PC, and it's like, no, dude, you can't. The whole point and the whole reason it's that cheap is because you can't. And if you try to, it's just gonna really chug. Well, and, and or like fight you every like step of the way. Yeah, and you really don't want to. Like that's one thing I think that they messed up with, like how they did some of the stuff with the 360 mm-hmm. and and even the the Xbox One is they kept trying to add in all these extra menus, and it's like no. You're meant for games. That's the reason why gaming's so good on it. You can, you know, make mm-hmm. something better for cheap because the games perform better on these, even with, you know, sometimes not as good hardware. And now we're actually getting some awesome hardware in the PS5. So, yeah, I'm, I'm really curious to see what the difference is. But again, I think with the lag from connection, it's just going to be bad. So, it'll be the same. We'll just be able to see things like a bit more smoother, which is nice. I'm just glad that they had like enough faith twice, right, to put it on another generation. Oh yeah, hmm. and that's that's the other news. Like, we definitely have a third year now. Can confirm. We'll just we'll just see if we have a fourth. <laughs> right. It's always it's always um to be determined, right? TBD until we get there. Or they have the letter coming. Okay, so. Moving on to the patch notes, though, we have something that is amazing um, and I'm really hyped about. If you have uh, fully maxed out a suit, like I did with the MLRS, by the way, it, we said this before the podcast, but last night, I got a gold box. It had tokens in it. But the thing is, I always ask, what what's in it? And Gustav was like, <laughs> dupe MLRS. And, you know, someone was like, tokens. So I got tokens. So they were like, haha, I got it. And then I was like, I backed out, and then someone else said, time to spend tokens. So I was like, yeah. actually, yeah, let's go do it. And then I got a gal that had a gold crate that was a dupe MLRS. Gustav, man, he knew. He knew. I was the one that told you to spend, by the way, time to waste Oh, was that you? Tokens? Okay, okay. I, I, didn't know, I didn't know who was the one. I just saw <laughs> time. Like, I, think, I think there might have been oh, a shit. few, too. But everybody's just like, oh, let's go. And I'm like, okay, cool. I saw let's time to waste the tokens. So I was like, okay, let's do it. We in there. And yeah, it was it was good. Um, so now, also they upped it to plus four instead of plus three. Hopefully, they do even more because just saying, some of the suits I have have more than fifty returns. I'm looking at my Zaku Cannon that has like mm-hmm. almost a thousand now. But uh, you know, um, that would be nice to get like twenty points per battle. Just saying, <laughs> I, I don't think they would ever do that. But uh, uh, but yeah, so. The enhancement stuff, that's pretty cool. Getting four per game after just playing a suit 50 times, that's not bad. And the way it goes now is you get four points to a random suit if you have it maxed out. So again, like with my MLRS now, I definitely have more than 50 games with it. So if I play the MLRS, what happens is I'll get plus four, and whatever suits I have in my hangar, well, one of them will get a plus four for that game. I think that's just amazing. Like, and that's actually kind of grindable, right? Mm-hmm. You know, you get 50 games, that's 200 points. So 25 games, you're at 100. Like, that's not bad. Like, essentially, that's three days worth of research for 25 games. So, I can deal with that. Like, that's, mm-hmm. that's pretty nice. Um, but any other thoughts from you guys on that? It's a good change. Mm, you can I'm... still play your favorite suit and still push um, upgrades on stuff you had in the hangar. It's not bad. Yeah, it, it kind of talks about like what we were hoping they were going to do once they like established it is just to change it going forward, and it's good that they're doing that. Uh, we'll go through a couple of random changes, and we'll hit the uh, like the actual buffs and nerfs here in a bit. Um... So they changed the icon for yourself um, on the map so that you know who you are now. Instead of just seeing another marker, you see your mobile suit, MS unit. Or wait, no, this is for when you're outside. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so when it's standby. Oh, if there's a suit on standby outside. Okay, that's what it is. Because it was difficult to determine the current location of your own mobile suit with the same design. I just got into I a 450 room and I'm seeing suit. nothing but fucking dual hands. 
Nice. Oh, no. no, no. It's that time. Oh, no. It's already happening. Yeah, I think I need like five more I'm wins. On, I'm monster Mash. Um, so in practice, we already kind of mentioned this. They upped it to 650. That's really cool. You can actually, you know, fight Cubelays, Hamahamas, and... What was the A1? I think it's the A1. Mm. Or was it the... Oh, I'm not sure. I haven't been in. I, I forgot what the raid one is. Oh, bad. Oh, no. Um, my thing is, I just want to see the AI fight us with those. I didn't, I didn't get to try that, but I just yeah, want to see how they actually the fight. Cubelay. Yeah. Like, that's pretty cool if they got full AI stuff on that. Let's go. Time to start putting in some more stuff for simulator, please. Yeah. <laughs> um, so pilot related, this is pretty cool for anybody who's on the uh, edge of capping out your rank. So now, uh, before, if you were a captain before they came out with major, uh, you would have zero XP. Um, and you would just be sitting there at like Captain 19, I think is what it was. I think it's either way, whatever the 19, 24, whichever one. Now it's Major 24 is what you have to get. But you can go ahead and get one XP before hitting Major 25. So that would be your promotion mission. So before mm -hmm. you actually had to get the previous level and then your promotion mission level, which was kind of annoying when they added it. So, I mean, that's just cool. You're ready to go for your promotion like immediately when they add a new one. So. Um, or just when you're doing the missions to get to your next one. That's a good addition. Yeah. Well, I mean, still, you, you still got to go through that last level, so it's still like another, what, 56,000 XP or something for mm -hmm. your promotion. But now instead of getting like the 50, what it says here, 55,850, and then I have to do like 56,000, now you just got to do the 56 and that's it. Well, and mm -hmm. one. Because they stop you at one XP before, but right. All right, um, yeah, I got gotcha. you. Okay. Then they have a thing in the database to see either the monthly suits that you have or what the monthly suits are. So that's cool. It's in Haro database item data. That's probably good. No one ever went to the website, so that's probably a good yeah. call to put it in game. Oh yeah, I have, I don't I could yeah I couldn't count on. I'd my love hands. to see their metrics on that. And like between what who uses the website? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we because they like we say that kind of stuff, and then they actually went out of the website for the JPN. So like, I wonder how many people even use that, or if that's just more common than we think. Hmm. Yeah, I wonder. Uh, that would be cool to see. So we talked about the Cubile. Um. Happy Halloween. We got the Dulahan. With the... Hold on, Magnum. You're going, I think you're passing a very, very important um, mm -hmm. note on the patch notes before you go into Happy Halloween. Um, I don't know if you had said it, but in the horror menu store, they're changing the beauty ticket tab to other. Um, Wait, what? I think that, <laughs> oh, I think that has serious. Oh, I mean, no, I mean, it's not even a joke. I think uh, yeah. that has serious implications for like um, what more they currencies. could potentially, yeah, put into the store. Yeah. Oh, um, no. that, that like opens up you know, potential cosmetics, um, you know, other paid items and stuff like that. Like, um, they can actually expand on the hair shit still first. <laughs> like, I don't disagree. Um, the cosmetic game is weak as hell in this, uh, in this like, game. I think we've been for, spoiled like, by like so TSO2 and other shit like that too. You're not but, wrong, but it's like free money. They're not capitalizing not on it, man. It, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. That's, that like, feels like make a new the, hairstyle. It feels like that's the name of the game of this series though like wasted they're, opportunities they're just late to the game on everything that other you cut off but you cut off, I'm, yeah. I'm sure it's something like other people do other already people do, yeah yeah do already and yeah. like i mean look here's here's an example just on cosmetics path of exile pretty much funds itself on cosmetics i'm just saying mm -hmm. now they're oh, yeah. insanely expensive but still like yeah like, they have that that grown in um player base like they're just willing to throw it out. So yeah, they want to look fancy while they're murdering everything on screen from off the screen, or you know meleeing fifty times a second because that definitely looks. You know, just just sorry on on a side note, um, and I guess I could tie it into Gundam as well. 
But like when you play a game for so long, you just get used to something, and then mm-hmm. somebody from the outside just looks at it and like, says, dude. "Yeah, like I melee like fifty times a second, and they're like, dude, your your character just had a seizure. What in the world is going on? That looks obnoxiously silly. That looks so dumb." And I'm like, "But I like attack your fast. It's so cool, man. You know." But from the outside, just somebody seeing that, it's like, wow, that really does look silly. And I'm just like, oh. Yeah, I remember when I thought GBO2 just looked really clunky and playing it was really clunky. But it was a Gundam game, so I'm in there. And then now I've just come to accept the clunkiness a little bit. Mm-hmm. So that, you know, when just somebody who has never played it looks at it, they're like, yeah, that looks a little clunky. And I'm like, oh, yeah. That's right. Hmm. <laughs> so. But so the Halloween stuff. Rate of recon team crates has been increased to twenty five percent from ten percent. Uh, search for the Pell Rider Dulahan head in the base camp. So if you didn't do that, you can get a head cosmetic, which is just the Dulahan head, which looks obnoxious on characters. It's kind of funny looking. Uh, it's fantastic. Um. I know uh, Emblem made a video. Uh, I also made a video on where the stuff is at. So check those out. You still haven't found them all. But they got pretty creative on this one, didn't they? Like, I bet these different spots for the most part. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I not only did they just use different spots, but they, like I said, they, you know, they, the GOG was just on stuff somewhere this was like they were in stuff and all over the place like it feels like the minute that they realized that they could just like keep it a lot more scaled down they didn't have to use so much of the background like Mm -hmm. they just kind of went ham with that idea which is nice it's a good shift from like having a even though i was looking in the mountains oh yeah i sure was too like where the fuck there's gotta be some there's like other but no no, it's all a lot more in plain sight or just at angles you wouldn't think. Oh, that yeah. Was, that was really cool. Or shooting out of cannons. That oh, was yeah. really cool. That like was that. awesome. They had to have one moving one, right? after. Like... Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was looking up in the I sky. I think the best like, one... <laughs> I looked at the video, too. I think the best one is just the one in the base camp. Like, uh, you know, it's not hard to find, but it's just one of those things. It's just like, clever girl. <laughs> There was um that one that was in the Elise that everyone was like crouching around with their heads like, hey, <laughs> stop blocking that. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of fun. Too bad there was no um, I, I do miss the gog that was like looking up tender skirt from uh last year though. <laughs> no, the one in the Elise was kind of there, but it wasn't quite right. It was in the general. It was more modest. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah thought it, it was, I thought it was. I thought it was going to be angled in the same direction. It was like side eyed and you know, you know, you walk around conventions and they got the they got the hot grills. Last week, you, you don't like look directly. <laughs> oh, there's a term for it. Peeping. It was peeping. Uh, here we go. So here's the Halloween stuff. Let's just go down through this. There we go. There's the helmet. So can't use it in uh, b- combat, by the way. Base camp yeah. only. Uh, yeah, there's we that too. Try it all day, but uh, whatever. Uh, but also other cosmetics. You get a little Halloween jack of Halloween. A there's another one too. Uh, you get the Halloween lantern. That's a cool new one. And you get some more boxes. And bad, we won't, don't have enough DP to actually use those boxes, but we get more boxes. Yeah. I will not rant for the next 15 minutes about how the, we don't have enough DP because apparently I was in the top 9%. Wow. Yeah, well, remember that last post that they did, like, if you were Captain 19 waiting to hit Major, you're in the top 9% of rankings. Yeah, which congratulations. Means... Everyone who plays this regularly is in the top 9 Yeah, and that's, well, and that's, your, <laughs> that's proportional to how much DP you have. So that means right. literally I don't have enough DP to use my boxes. So that means right. at, at least if there are people that can use the boxes, 
less than 8% can use the boxes, which is just really bad. All I'm saying. You know, I, I won't rant for the next 20 minutes on that. But. Just play more LOL. <laughs> just grind for a day's LOL. I mean, the bigger thing to me is that they're so... I remember when we were saying that, like, oh, man, hopefully they give us enough of these repair boxes and stuff, and it's just like, that's all they're giving us now. Yeah. <laughs> give more DP. Um, so the uh, other stuff they have, though, is the uh, devil horns, the wings, and the tail. Uh, that you can unlock, or and you pretty much get all of these, and you unlock the Bilahan. So the pumpkin head isn't back, nor is the witch hell, or hat, which is interesting. Oh yeah, darn it! And then I mentioned the recon thing. But by the way, though, uh, have we seen the Dulahan? I know Gustav just did, but uh... I saw some. I saw a tiny bit of gameplay, but. Uh, nothing too serious, but I have the stats up. I was gonna say, do we want to save that and then just actually change the topic to Dulahan once we get done with the rest of the patch notes? Or sounds good. Okay. I honestly, thought we were gonna go into the Dulahan after the Mark II, and he said patch. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I didn't. I didn't think about the Dulahan until I forgot it existed. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I I forgot it existed oh, okay. until Gustav was like, oh, there's some Dulahans in this game, and I was like, oh, we probably should have talked about. My bad. But uh, yeah, um, we talked about the costume. You can get the uh, normal suit, Neo Zeon 07, mm-hmm. and Crew 2 helmet. Ugh. Um, of course, so. like the one set that I really wasn't looking to get, I got both pieces for on one of my my own characters. Puru puru. Ugh. You saw me be eating ice cream in no time. No, thank you. Oh, oh no. That's that's Poober's favorite food. Yeah. And those episodes, literally obnoxious brew going the poo poo poo. that's uh man. I, I can prove numerically that I was annoyed by that. If you don't have kids, it's not gonna change your mind. Let's put it that way. But anyway, here we go. Um we got some other units in the lottery. The Galbaldi Beta, level 3, 550 cost. The GM3, mm. level 3, 500 cost. The Hyzac 3, level 3. Not the Hyzac 3, whoops. The Hyzac, level 3, 500 cost. And the Zogok, level 4, 500 cost. So. They're pretty liberal with, like, just throwing out those levels. Yeah, that was kind of interesting that they just decided to put all those in. Um... Honestly, I don't think the high Zach holds up at 500. Mm. Like the machine gun's cool, but mm. it's gonna need some. If you really want to try to like get super sweat and just lay that axe on people, so I'm assuming the damage is gonna scale up for the extra levels for it. Mm. But it's also still pretty slow with that big swing. Like yeah. I can see it pretty vulnerable all the same. I mean, I, I feel like the Hyzac kind of starts falling off. I mean, like, the machine gun's cool. I like the machine gun, but the machine gun falls off even at 450. So you kind of have to go to the beam, and even then you get a beam axe people. But, like, I, I don't think it's enough. So, kind of rip yeah, on it's, that. Um, it's definitely a murder ball suit. It can be pretty self-sufficient, but there are, there are other suits at those costs that just do that better. Yeah, especially when everything moves so fast, it's easy for people to split off and break apart. And when you're by yourself, it's scary. Um, I guess the next one there, GM3. I, well, real quick, the Galbaldi Beta, I think, is fine at 550. It's already a great suit at 450. Um, or, yeah, 450, 500. It's fine. It's pretty much the the meta suit. They gave it out this month, actually, which I mm-hmm. think just mm-hmm. turned over for the Super right now. The Super Gundam. Yeah, so, um, again, I still want to know how many people uh, weld just to get the Mark II and the uh, the Mark II Gundam now, I guess I gotta say, and the uh, Galbaldi Beta. Because... They were welling to get the Methus and it's happened to get a Mark II at the same time, Magnum. <laughs> There you go. That's what it was. I mean, that's how I got the level one. As well. Um, uh, 
Um, then GM3, do you guys think that holds up at 500 at level 3? Yeah. I mean, it still has the same basic kit. The missiles aren't too bad. The hip fires are a little wonk, but um, they probably still have the output. Yeah, I mean, they chunk, so the damage is only going to get better. I think the GM3 holds up, because, I mean, um, I personally still think the GM3 is um, a bit of a step up above the G-Line standard. Mm. Um, and I think we already have a standard at this cost. Um, and granted, you probably don't see it, but I think the I think the GM three gets gets the extra oomph that um, you probably you probably need to be like viable yeah. enough. Focus fire, and then like the missiles are really good to keep the enemy moving, just doing mm. things that they don't want to do because they don't want to take that damage. Yeah, not only the fact that you can, uh, I think you can walk while using the missiles if I uh, or. Just make them play a more hell game for like a, a shorter second. One. Shit, shit, shit. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, um, you already have constant pressure that the um, G line standard has to stand still to do. So, so it's pretty nice. Yeah. Just do that walk and like wiggle at them. Like, just make them mm -hmm. force them around. It's not great. <laughs> um, the Zogok. Um... Level four. I don't know. I think. I mean, they're just adding it. I think because more aquatic suits. We need more stuff in the Wawa at high but, cost. You guys. I don't know. I don't think. I don't think it holds up at that cost. I think the high gog that they added at five hundred is nice, but mm. I don't know if the Zogar. I think it's pretty solid though. Like you, we have enough beam parts that I think you can at least um, subvert some of that extra damage. It's got an instant knockdown on its sub, and it comes out really fast. Um, that being said, even though it does have some good stun threshold on its main, and it does have that, um, was it the Sturm Faust as a secondary? A lot of that's really slow. When you start getting into those faster, like, high costs, unless they're zooming right at you, uh, you're probably going to have a hard time putting some of that stuff on target to set yourself up. You're going to have to be a lot more advantageous in your approach. Yeah, for sure. Jam your, your hand up someone's ass and just hope that they don't, like, get the tackle or like get away from you in the meantime. Hmm. Um but yeah, if anything else on those, if not, then what else we got? Yeah, Zaga could be interesting. Um has uh, it, the kit's still pretty solid for um the cost. I think the Sturmfaust ready up time will be a little bit awkward, but I mean just having access to a maneuver armor and dodge roll um will be interesting I and mean, you just go at yeah. it um also i think i missed those here somewhere like i remember that that used to be a big deal for those suits in like lower costs and now it's just kind of oh. standard for like those cost ranges which is still nice it means it's still like equivalent mm-hmm Okay, so the next thing that they have in the ticket shop, we got the Human Lightning Level 2. I like it. I got the Level 1 at the end of last month for the Platinum thing. So, that's always nice. Mm -hmm. um, level 2 is really good. I know some people use the Bazooka over the... Or, yeah, over Bazooka the, over the, the Boombox. Yeah. But... I like the, the boom box. just seems so strong, yeah. But I can see I can see reasons for both. Mm -hmm. Like if you're more Although, of a like dedicated bluezuka, like yeah. you want to check in there with those those swings and stuff. Because you still, but I mean, almost uh, the wrist are good. Well, I'll just touch in like I feel like in that regard though, you could still do that with the simplified. You just need to switch weapons before the missiles go out, but. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I don't know. Oh. It's a more simplified approach, I guess, is the the better way to put it. Maybe. But <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. the because we're gonna we'll probably talk about the parts here for a little bit. But real quick, okay. in the DP store though, we got the GPO one. That's mm. really nice. Uh, it's two hundred thousand, and you have to be instant one to get it. But um. 
cool addition. Uh, it's a it's very solid suit. Yeah, and it just got buffed this patch too. So it's always nice. Uh, I guess real quick we'll go down here. Um, clan stuff. Six fifty ace this Saturday. Or no, tomorrow. Tomorrow morning. Tomorrow Friday. Yeah. Yeah, tomorrow yep, morning. Tomorrow morning. Oof. Uh yeah, I probably won't be there. Um so yeah. Unfortunately, we had a couple people short, and then um, one of our one of our guys is sick, so we're not gonna be able to make it. Yeah, I'm probably gonna be. Yeah, up. they're all right. Yeah. Yeah, gotta focus on that health first. So. Is it anything serious, or just? Mm, so far, no. Let him tell him to keep us posted, though. But um. So yeah, tomorrow morning you can make it cool. Uh, anybody in uh, MG, good luck. Unless I pull an all-nighter tonight, uh, I probably won't be there. Um, but yeah, I'm probably going to go to bed at like 3 a.m., I'm guessing. But yeah, the uh, 6v6 though, or sorry, 5v5, 650 cost area, that's what I was trying to say. Ace match, Tropical Desert. Um, that'll be interesting. Then we have next week on Saturday, think no okay so we don't have one uh for halloween um we have one on the seventh of next month this is going to be the next one after that another morning one 506v6 basic ruin city and then finally the one after that on the 14th we'll have our basic simple 4v4 600 cost uh space in the new colony We got another late night space. Wasn't the last one space as well? No, it was ground. Um, it was uh, it was a low cost lobby. Um, was it two fifty, three fifty? Um, I thought it was space. I thought it was the four hundred space. No, that was the week before. That was the week before. Um, no, no, I mean oh, like the the one. late night one. Oh, you mean like the the Western time, time friendly one. one? Yeah, the time friendly um, one. Let me look. I'm pretty sure because up. they probably yeah, got the, the last. Isaac. The last one was space. Yeah. Yeah. So In yeah. that regard, yeah. We got another time-friendly space one, guys. Yay! They're all gonna be space. Uh, I hope that doesn't become a thing. Just saying. In space. Because we did say that we're like, hopefully it's not space next time. I was... And it's really space. <laughs> insert insert a clip of that right here. Go. Oh man. Try to do like a quick clip of um. Definitely yeah, right. a separate thing. Just a meme. Um, so, there we go. There's those. Um, and then they had some extra fixes and stuff. I didn't really see anything in the fixes. I don't know if you guys saw anything, but nothing looked like it was actually, you know, a quality of life buff like they did with the MLRS. Uh, a couple of Just like, patches back. Little, like text fixes or like little animation errors or whatever. There's a lot of stuff at the Aqua Gym in there that was like the bigger thing okay but yeah i don't think there was anything so there was somebody let us know uh but here's the big thing and i don't know how long we're going to talk about this but uh the parts we got new parts mm -hmm. yeah so uh we that... are officially at um melee firing program and melee or, um, range program level five. Yeah, that is uh kind of cool. Sadly, the enhanced firing program can only be used on like six hundred up supports, but you know, it's there. It Oof. exists. It definitely. Um, this is something I've said a lot with this game is that a they definitely encourage people to bunga. They've always made the firing programs or up more expensive. They wanted to cost like certain things that you, they assumed that you just wouldn't have in like the mid range, and like once again, they um, I wouldn't say it's this exactly the same because the the level five for the melee distributes it across all three categories this time around, but they're so low impact that it's tip it's typically stuff that you probably have enough room for it anyway, if you're gonna mm -hmm. put that in first. I mean, using mm -hmm. the new uh, Mark II as an example, um. 
you know, mm -hmm. I said the beam defense. So if you put all the beam defense and you had the complex expansion slot upgrade, so if you, you know, That's enhance it. the suit, then you can fit both of those beam defense and this melee five and pretty much all the other melees on it. And it's like, well, that's a thing. So you can really bump its melee damage up. Unless I just miscounted, but yeah, I'm pretty sure you can do that. And you probably want a little more utility on it, but I mean, if you just really want to go, you want to do a magnum build, you got to intensify that melee. So yeah. But um, but for real though, like you can fit that melee program on so many suits. Whereas, Striker custom gets to eighty four apparently. Uh, the Gan can get to ninety three. Oh damn, the Gan! I wonder. I'm assuming that Maniac must have bought it as soon as he could. Oh yeah, I bought yeah, both I of them. I am up to. I went ahead. I had enough tickets. I've been saving for that Zoc level two, and then I just saw those, and I'm like, well, I better buy these. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> The melee one, at least. The melee one is really good. Oh, yeah. Everybody wants the melee one. The ranged one is if you play the MRS, M MLRS or Blah. anything, you know, <laughs> high-cost support is about the only things that you're ever going to use that on. And that's my big complaint is not only does it take 10, 10 long-range slots, mm -hmm. but it takes 6 medium. Yep. Dummy thick. So, yes, it is cool. That my uh, MLRS has 92 range strength, but oh, God. um, yeah, I, I don't. Get I mean, it's cool and all, but still, one day we might go into the triple digits with that shit. Insane. Well, the highest is either 99 or 100. That's that's where damage caps out. I is hard cap. Yeah, that's the hard cap. Is okay. 99 or 100. So. That'll be interesting. Because we also have like one more cost range to go to for what we know so far through the sorting. So I wonder if that'll change when that's introduced or if they'll keep it there. And it'll just be more common than be able to hit like 100 with those. I'm actually trying to find one to see if I could like super cap out everything. Hmm. But it's oh, kind of weird. Like, uh, apparently, the Zamel, 100 Zamel. Oh, yeah. You, you, you could use it with the Zamel, yeah. Hmm. But that's what I'm saying. There's very few suits that you can actually use it with, and they're mainly yeah. really high cost supports. Like, I don't even yeah. think the Hama Hama. And bottom slots is steep. Yeah, the Hama Hama, I don't think actually, so I kind of have to take that back. I don't think the Hama Hama or even the Full Armor 7th that I have at 650 can use it. The only two that I have that can use it is the GPO 2 at 600 and 650. Maybe the GPO 4 in space looks like. Might be able to do it. I'm going to assume the Super Can too. Oh yeah, the Super Can at 550. Holy crap. Okay, that's kind of cool. Well, that makes sense though. Spacesuits are generally um, bottom slot focused, um, especially if they're shooty styles as well, which a lot of them are. But like the 500 Mark II can use the level 5 melee program easy. Mm. And it's. Ooh, the Xeon can use it. Yes! Yes! Oh, yes! no. Okay, sorry. I have... Plus enough let spaces me... even faster. Oh, let, me, let, me, let me calm down here, guys. Hang on. Whew. Yeah. Okay. Let's gotta just change your pants real quick. Be all right. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be right back. Um. So finding the Gan, which is kind of why I got on here. Um. So yeah, very few suits can use the uh, level five firing program. Hopefully they buff it. I doubt they will because they, for some reason, hate firing suits. But the um. Let's see. Yeah, the level three Gan. Uh, wait a minute, what? How is wait? How did they get ninety? Is there a level four Gan that I don't know about? Hmm. Okay, well, um, I don't know who said like ninety something on the Gan, but uh, 
88 is as high as you can get on the GAN, level 3. Is that including upgrades? Yeah, I've got the <laughs> firing... Oh, good call. That's right. Hmm. Enhancement list. Ah, that's right. Hang on. Yeah, okay, that's <laughs> right. You okay. you have to get it. You have to get the uh, five thousand nine hundred and forty points, and you can get ninety three. So the level two one can get ninety two, I guess. The two Gian mains in the game can rejoice. <laughs> yeah, they can fully upgrade that. Get ninety three total. Yeah, that's so. That's how that works. Um, that's insane though. Like, goodbye, Psycho Gundam. Oh. Oof. Yeah, those times are about to get a lot shorter. Yeah. And by that, probably by a couple more seconds, but still. I don't know, 13% damage over all those hits? Mm -hmm. I don't know, I'd say, I'd say you could probably get a minute 20. Because right now, what, the fastest time is like a minute 30, something like that? Say a minute 20, maybe a little bit more. But yeah, firing one, really good. Doesn't take too many blows. It takes a little bit of everything, which I wish that's how the firing, or the, or, sorry, I said firing tonight. Melee is good. A little bit of everything. Firing, we kind of got gypped. But, oh well. It's support life. I'm just used to it at this point. We shouldn't have to be. But yeah, that's pretty much where we're at. Um, so any other thoughts on the firing and melee program? Really good firing. Uh... Oh, also the Mark II Gundam, you know, can use the melee really well, so it's still the best rate at 500 calls. <laughs> but I thought the Methus was the best raid. <laughs> I mean, actually, you do have the Jarja at 500. I have to give that thing a lot of credit. Yeah, the yeah, Jarja is gross. disgusting. I could, uh, I, I think, I think it. Uh, I think Jarja's like somewhere Definitely like takes its time. with all that in there, but like, damn, dude. Just with yeah. when you... the raw data output, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, it, yeah. it's so easy to use. So ports walk away from the from the uh, Mark II. Nothing walks away from the Jarja. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, literally. Like, yeah, you get like a slight lift, maybe, if they get you really good with the Mark II. Yeah. Like, if you're lucky, your legs are going to be gone. For a suit to be able to downswing three times in a row, though, that's what I just can't get over. Like, all you do is just stagger, and then you downswing with poke just to knock him over real quick. Then you just swap, downswing, swap, downswing, and it's like, what? What suit does You don't does play, this? man. The Mark II's just reporting it to the manager. The Jar Jar ends your whole career. Yeah, and mm -hmm. the thing is, like, I mean, honestly, as much as I say, like, the Striker Custom is one of the most overpowered raids, just because it has a double dodge roll and everything once it's going, and it has the damage, the main problem is that that punch... It's one punch. When you go in for that one punch, you uh, you, you normally miss half the time because you punch over yes. top of them. So that is kind of the problem with that suit. So your big chunk of damage, you have to kind of combo into it for the knockdown. And I'm just bad at doing that. So <laughs> I just need to get good is the real answer here. But it's... Get good. I, I would say the Jarja and that are both like S tier at 500 cost for sure. Don't suck. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it's so hard not to, though, Gustav. It really I need is. You to teach me the, the ways of the goose. How do, how do I get loose? No, no. <laughs> Let's intensify the hog. Don't hog. actually do Hog? Um, so, the new model frame, level three. Uh, and since I have the game up and the parts up anyway, let's go ahead and... Just go to that. Sadly, I gotta put up on the website too. I couldn't buy this one because it's like three hundred and something tickets. So if you were to buy all four hundred and five, wait, was it really that much? Yeah, it's four hundred and five. Oh my gosh, it was. Oh man, yeah. So you need seven hundred to buy both of the enhancement programs. Um, so four hundred and five tickets. Six long range, which is very interesting. So it's going back to like the uh, normal health upgrades from the mm -hmm. strength and frame uh, kind of style. And it's six, two, and one going from long to close. 
and the 1,200 health, and the one thing I do want to compare it to is the strength and frame, level 5. Because isn't that like the same thing? Or am I being crazy? Oh, wow. Okay, no, strength and frame is way better. It's 3, 1, and 2. Okay, never mind. I, I was being crazy. Mm. So, um, if you have some extra long-range slots for something, uh, you can go ahead and just use that and get even more health. But I honestly think it's um, like you probably want to use the more cost effective HP slots, but I think it's for those um, higher cost um, melee focused uh, suits that have like just a couple of stray throwaway slots because six is pretty high. But, um, you know, I don't think it's high enough to where like you couldn't fit it in, um, especially if you're like trying to get i guess more bang for your buck maybe and just get more usage out of the other slots um hom robbie's an example right because the only thing i have in its long range is uh mm -hmm. it was either going to be health or i was like oh i can fit the firing program level enhanced firing program level four so mm -hmm. and that's five long and two medium and i don't even have the complex expansion slot so if i had the complex expansion slot i could fit this on and still have one medium range left over. So I could, yeah, that would, like, yeah, I agree. The the raids that can do that is definitely, they just have those extra long range that, because, I mean, I don't know, I, I normally don't do too much with uh, the long range stuff mm. when I'm playing a melee suit, unless I'm throwing on, like, a strength and frame, and that's about it. So, in this case, yeah, you could definitely use that. I think it's still kind of up in the air, though. Um, I don't think you have to run out and get to level three, mm -hmm. but it's just one of those things where, like, when you do have it, it'll kind of, it'll kind of condense some of your slots a little bit. Um, I feel like for sure. When I say condense, I more mean like the slots you're using, because I mean, it, I think the reinforced frames are more cost effective um, for what they do. Yeah, that's and what eight. I mean, again, it's kind of the thing where I thought about, for instance, the uh, Quick Loader 4, right? Quick Loader 4 mm -hmm. takes more part slots than having a Quick Loader 3 and 2, but mm -hmm. it's, one, it's one part slot, or it's one, you know, actual piece, rather than having two pieces and you only have eight to choose from. So, right. Yeah, and like I think it's good when they pretty much staple two part costs together and you're kind of like trading off maybe like one point or something because you're kind of being a bit more efficient so you can fit other parts on. But um, when it's literally just blatantly overcosted for like no reason, it just doesn't make any sense. That's how I feel with the firing five, to be honest. Yeah, mm -hmm. and honestly, the new model frame three kind of probably like fits into that category somewhat. Yeah, they took like, yeah, they took away what made the new model frame good, which was its kind of ability to slot in, um, pretty easily, medium and close. Yeah, yeah, and they're like, well, it's just a more expensive strength and frame. There you go. Yeah, because like I, I think the potential is st still kind of exists, but it, it's not as it's not as good as it was. Like mm -hmm. it's hard to say. I'd have to play around with builds, but like I, I don't I don't think it I don't think it'd be worth spending to four hundred and five uh to get it right now. I mean I normally don't even if I'm if I'm coming down to it at that point, just mm -hmm. kinda as an example, if you're gonna have that many long range slots, the only time that you're gonna ever use the uh new model frame level three is right. over say the strength and frame level five is if you don't have the extra close range slot because the only difference right. between it is one the new model frame cost one close and two medium, and the strength and cost two medium one close. Okay. Or sorry, sorry, two close and one medium. I said backwards. Right. And uh, you're paying and, you're paying double long range and then, yeah. in order to get more use out of your top slots, essentially. And I don't. I think it costs four or five, maybe not six. But yes, it has happened. 
I have acquired the Mark II on a single spin. <laughs> La fucking right. mouth. Okay, here we go. Let's rewind. Let's start over. We gotta do the Mark II. <laughs> <laughs> show it off. That is gonna have to cancel the entire. Here we go. I've, I've been right, playing guys. a lot of Genshin Impact this week. <laughs> um, I recently hit <laughs> AR. Th- uh, 36 and I'm on level 5 now. Man, I'm like AR28. Sorry, level, level dude. I need to like get, I need to like do the story <laughs> mode for real. Like Yeah, that's that's the next couple of streams is going to be like story mode on that and new game plus. Man, if you reverse too far, hit hit fast forward, but uh but anyway, uh yeah, sorry. Um so back to where we're so, at though with the uh parts uh the space frame. Now this is just cool. Mm-hmm. I agree. I mean, it's, I like that shit. It's uh, I mean, where will I use it? I don't know. Will I get it yet? No, <laughs> right? it's two hundred and twenty tickets. I'm probably gonna wait till it hits the shop. But it's just kind of cool. Three extra thrust and two hundred HP. Mm. Okay. I uh, was short for the program, so I just, I just got. It. Yeah. What? Sorry. Oh, you were short for the programs. Gotcha. Yeah. So I just got got that instead, just so I could have it. But mm. three medium, one close, and one long. I mean, that's really cool. You get a little bit of HP and a little bit of oh, thrust. Yeah. Uh, I know Rays are going to be happy with that. Mm. Yeah. It's something that just kind of slots in and gives you something that every raid desperately needs, which is more thrust. So, honestly, though, I like the um, idea of hybrid parts. Um, they, I, I feel like something like this is another thing that they've needed for a while. Yep. I just... I will say though, I hope they scale it. Like, it's not going to happen because they don't scale anything well in this game for the most yeah. part. But like, the space frame level two is going to be like something dumb when it comes out. It's going to be like five, three, and five for oh, like know. you know two hundred and fifty HP and four but thrust. Because you know, and that that's just hyperbole, obviously. But you you know what I'm saying? Like they're gonna like mess it up or whatever. It's gonna be but... something stupid. Okay, here, yeah. here's where we here's where we either have that what you just said age very well or age very poorly. So we need to oh, clip no. this right now and then like straight <laughs> up like just for fun. Now that one, <laughs> when they literally come out with the level two, I will actually edit the video to put that in and put that in. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, like five, three, five. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Because, you know, you kind of joke, well, that's just hyperbole. I'm like, no, that sounds very accurate. Because look at the ASL just thing. It, look at the just stupid have ASL. It, um, have a zoom in on the numbers and have like someone laughing in the background. <laughs> like the focusing. Just put ring. the hero laughing picture. Yeah. That- yes. <laughs> but yeah. like. There's some good examples, like the focusing ring, whatever, and then the the stupid uh, ASL thing to make your ASL better. It's like, what what are they even thinking with these hard slot numbers? Like, seven and five? Seven long and five medium just to have your ASL by ten? Whereas the one that has your ASL by five is four long and one medium. Like, I still wouldn't even use that. What seven and five? Forget that, dude. I'm out. But Magnum, they took away two, one of the mid slots. You just have to pay, you know, <laughs> four times the cost in top and bottom, and you get yeah. fifty more HP and one more boost. What yeah. could? What's wrong? <laughs> balanced. Totally balanced. We're like some of these like cooling systems. They're like, yo, by the way, cooling system eleven close seven medium and too long but magnum that gives you that makes your beam rifles come back <laughs> you know 0. 0.4 seconds faster or whatever when you overheat that's so relevant i would love to or... see like some of the sorting <laughs> players and like what kind of parts they typically use on oh those. here we go here's a perfect example hang on i found the best one yet okay here's your here's your rotation speed by Eight. five one medium, right. four long. Okay. Level two. Yeah. Three medium, seven long. Okay, that kind of makes some sense. <laughs> For 15 rotation, eight close, six medium, one long. What? Oof. Hey, those supports aren't using those melee slots that they don't even have enough to <laughs> equip it with. <laughs> 
I use the two. It's pretty good. But the three, the three is a little bit awkward. Mm. I wish what, I... Though, when you have suits, I can wear both. Woo. I wish I could use the two on like more stuff, though. But yeah, like that's one of those stats where you don't realize how important that is until you like get into like seeing the difference between like higher cost suits and lower cost suits or like mm. suits that have been bumped up in level that still have that really rough rotation. Oh, God. Hell. <laughs> oh, he just died. Um, I've played around with it though. Like, um, yeah, it's it's nice to have. Like, um, there was a good while where I was putting some form of um, turn speed part on most of my suits, and I mean, it's nice. Um, oh, that's just a wonder. I, I generally don't do level three, but like level two is really good, and one's kind of up in the air, but um, level two is nice. By the way, just looking at these parts and just memeing real quick. Uh, I mm. really want the newest um, because they for some reason like to put it into the game and keep leveling it up. But the uh, Zaku Ag Zaku Commander and just use that uh, force cooling system so that when your thrusters overheat because you know they take three times the time mm. to cool down and just like use your overboost just nonstop because I think we're finally high enough to where you'll have like eighteen close range slots on that thing and every bit of that is just medium and close range so you can just like stack what is that 20 35 you might be able to get 40 percent and then if you can get them all 50 percent cool down so it only takes 15 seconds in between your so it's almost like a normal boost mm -hmm. only it's just over boost like that that would be kind of funny but um Let me see if I can find any other random ones that make no sense. Oh, here we go. Mm -hmm. Special leg buffer four. <laughs> like, what in the world? Two, five, and ten. That's going from long to close. <laughs> oh, right. Oh, it, it, you, you know what it is, then you just hear it out loud, and you're just like, oh, God, you're right. <laughs> By Jove, he's unfortunately got it. One, four, and five is a level three. Like it goes, it literally doubles every one of them, except for the medium. But still, it's so funny to be in the uh, six fifty practice room and see them all kind of wiggling around because they're all like scooty suits and stuff mostly, and they just kind of wiggle around like I've heard them up when they get close <laughs> to each other because they're doing the whole sidestep thing. Oh, by the way, I, I'm just surprised they didn't do this crazy part cost thing with the thruster parts, dude. I'm actually happy for you that you can put all those on your, um, uh, what, what's the suit that pretty much is yeah. dead now? Uh, the pixie. There we go. <laughs> right. Damn. Well, I'm sorry. He's it's not it's just Damn. he's not wrong. <laughs> like at dude. its base cost, where it would actually be a little more viable, it, it just died because of the Isaacs. Like, oh. Hello. I, see you, I can see you at all times. I, I still say that um, the Isaac had nothing to do with that. The Pixie was dead a long time ago. Oh, yeah, yeah. But mm. now it's just the... Uh, now it's just That being said, though, it's definitely, down. like, thinned out the amount of users. And the ones that you do see will be a little bit wary of. <laughs> because they're the ones that are, like, you turn around and they're just, like, clapping, like, two different people on your team. And it's like, how did this happen? Yeah. 